Hi guys, it's Debbie from Debbie J's Crafting Corner. Today I'm just going to share um, actually a replay of the Crafters View Design Team Edition that we just put up over on Erin Reed's channel. She was kind enough to allow me to also share it here to hopefully get this information out to more folks. So grab your notebook and take some good notes because there's going to be a lot of good information for you if you're looking to become a part of, in any fashion, a design team. Hey everybody, it's Erin Reed from Erin Reed Makes and welcome to the Crafter's View. This is a crafty talk show where I bring on a series of panelists and we have a topic of discussion and today's topic is all about design teams. So I'd like to introduce the panel to everybody. So welcome to the show everybody. Hi. You wave hi. Hi guys. <laughs> say hello, say hello. All right, so I'm Erin Reed Makes and or I'm Erin Reed of Erin Reed Makes and I have just been on a bajillion design teams over the course of the past 10 years. A lot of them have been with the ladies that you see here um, and some not. So I have put together a wonderful panel of some wonderful people in the industry and some are just design team, not, not just, they are amazing design team members, they are design team coordinators or they could also be company owners that have a design team within their company. So we're going to go down the list and we're going to start with Marina and we're going to go around through Cheryl, down to Rachel and down to Michaela. I kind of flipped everybody around somehow, everybody got jumbled from what I saw before. And please introduce yourself yourself, tell us about you, and what is your role in this topic of design teams? Great. Hi, I'm Marina from Marina's Corner. Um, I'm a serial design team member. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been lucky to um, kind of start my crafting career on design teams and, and uh, continue to serve on different design teams. Um, so yeah, it's been a great experience for me personally. I haven't worked as a design team manager, but I, I could share lots of experiences about different design teams I've been on. Very cool. All right, we're gonna go with Debbie. Hi, I'm Debbie from Debbie J's Crafting Corner, and I am also on design teams. I've been on one for a couple of years, and I'm now on a couple more. So I'm so far, I'm loving it. Very cool, Cheryl. Hi, I'm Cheryl Baglioli, and I have, too, been on multiple design teams. Um, I've also had the privilege of managing various different design teams over the years, and currently I am the creative, I'm the creative director for Gel Press, and I am the design team and education coordinator for the Crafters Workshop. Very cool. All right, Rachel. Hi, I'm Rachel Wynn. Um, I have been on various uh, design teams in the past. Um, I have been a design team coordinator. Currently, I'm on iCrafters design team. And then I've been really lucky and got to kind of work on the back end with a lot of owners, um, kind of as an employee and helped with the design team in that manner as well. Very cool. All right, Cassie. I am Cassie Lawrence. Uh, I've been on several design teams over the years and uh, work with a couple of companies now in sort of design team uh, fashion, but I'm also the design team coordinator uh, right now for Renia. So. Very cool. And Michaela. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Michaela. Um, I'm the marketing manager at Makers Movement. Um, so we are a manufacturer for stamps and dies. So I'm on the company side. Very cool. And I work with her too. <laughs> so I think one of the, the bigger topics that everybody probably is coming on potentially, and we're going to hit a lot of different topics and welcome to everybody who's come on. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I see somebody from, I always love to know where people are watching us from. So if you want to drop in, I already see in Melbourne, Australia. I love it when people are from all over the world and I love how global this show becomes. So if hi, you want to drop in, Wendy. Wendy. <laughs> say, yeah, say hi to people, you know, hello, hello. <laughs> So Hi, if you guys would like, <laughs> oh, we got Quebec, Canada, Canada, woohoo, go Canadians, Michigan. Now we're going to have the stream of wherever he's from. <laughs> <laughs> All of us have either run teams, been on teams, coordinated teams. So I think one of the biggest questions is how do you get on a team? Where do you even, like, how do you know when teams are putting out calls? Like, what is kind of the gist? I, I think that's like five different questions in that, but <laughs> let's start with, what should I do if I'm looking to be part of a design team? What can I do to put my best foot forward? Let's go with that. Does anybody want to speak up to that? Sure, I will. 
<laughs> okay. All right. Thanks. Um, you know, you definitely need an online presence and it doesn't. Oops. Oh, shoot. Oh, sorry, no. sorry, 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 <laughs> sorry. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to make you soft the screen and I let her move. <laughs> oh, no, the producer. Fire me. I'm just kidding. Okay. Go ahead. I'm now. giving you. You are totally solo. It's all you. <laughs> I was saying you really need an online presence. And it doesn't have to be a website or a blog. But think of it as um, a portfolio. Like any job you go to, you have to show people your work. So at least have an Instagram or a public Facebook where you're showing what you're doing. Um, the other thing is networking is so important. So a, a brand that you like, you really want to follow their page, comment, interact. If they have a private Facebook group, you want to join that so you can show your work and get to know people who are on the team it's to show them you know, who you are and what you can do. Um, Really, most of my jobs have come from connections that I've made with other crafters or from interacting with people on their pages. Like um, when brands have contests, that's what's landed me several jobs is entering the contest, winning first place, and now they know who you are. So network and, and show your stuff. And so one of the best ways to do that is if you end up posting anything on Facebook and YouTube even is allowing this now too, where you can actually tag a company or mm -hmm. tag a designer. Um, mm -hmm. Instagram, we've been able to do that for a long time, obviously Facebook, but yeah, YouTube, that's a big one that just started. As long as you have a thousand subscribers and the company's channel also has a thousand subscribers, you can tag that company, which I think is really cool. And they can tag you, it's even better. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, anybody else have any words of wisdom about putting your best foot forward to becoming or to trying out for a team or getting a company to even look at you or any, like if they have a call, like what, what would, be your well, suggestion if, if you're on if you do have a YouTube channel and you um, are involved with different hops that's one way to get your name out there because the other people that are in the hops are probably affiliated with other companies it's another networking thing but the hops have been a really really big thing for me I think everybody that I every crafter that I've met so far okay online online met I haven't met them in person but every one of them that I've met so far has been because I signed up for a hop somewhere along the way I think I met you Aaron um because of one last year I think it was tailor-made cards for you did one last year probably <laughs> people I, I'm I'm a very hard time saying no when somebody says hey can you do this I'm like yeah. exactly <laughs> <laughs> and that's another key thing. Like if somebody if somebody does reach out to you and says, Hey, do you want to do this? You know, it could lead to amazing opportunities. So mm -hmm. yeah, say yes if then somebody says yeah, and it may, they, they, they not... find you on the hops. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll completely echo that. Um and Miranda's comments about networking and and um again a lot of my jobs have come from networking. But in addition to that, I think that having um you know Shirley says that she's too much of a scaredy cat to have a YouTube channel. So am I. Like, this is really out of the norm for me. Really out of my comfort zone. You're doing great. But, <laughs> absolutely. I think that having, like, I think that having an Instagram in this day and age mm -hmm. is yeah. so vital. When I am helping a company look for designers, I start at Instagram. I'll expand from there. But I start at Instagram because if they have a decent following, if they're posting regularly, if they don't have political stuff on what's supposed to be a craft mm -hmm. page, then they're going to catch my eye. If they have clean, well-lit photos that are not super, super cluttered and they're showing their best work right there, that helps me every time. Yeah. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting a whole slew of people going, you got great to I have great friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It's always nice to have good friends. <laughs> and All right, anybody else have any comments or suggestions yep. to this topic right I'll now? interject. Um, you know, the different design teams that I've been on and helped manage over the years, one of the things I've noticed is people will apply when you do have design team calls. And I guess we'll talk about that in a little bit. And it's very difficult to go through those lists and and select people and go through 
if you've not used those products before. So if you're designing for, if you're trying out for a design team of stamp, you know, a stamp design team, if you've never shown any samples of your stamping skills, you probably won't be on that list. So, you know, a stencil company, dye company, whatever, you need some examples of that in your social media and on your online presence, most definitely. I concur. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. What company is gonna pick you to work with them if they've never seen you even work, even with a similar type product, like, you know, with yep. stencils, like if you never used it for stencils, you know. Yep. And, and maybe you <laughs> did for a number of years, but it's been three or four years since you've posted or a year. So they scroll down your feed or look at your latest videos and nothing's popping out. They're going to go, huh? So, yep. 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 Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. This layout looks really weird. It looks like a giant, like, funny <laughs> T. So we're going to switch to that one a little bit better. <laughs> just saying, you know, it just looks really strange all of a sudden. <laughs> All right. Anybody else have anything else to comment on this one? I would say that I always look for, um, like, even if you have an Instagram or a blog or a Facebook, um, I'll look to see kind of like what your engagement is like. Um, Cause it's like, even if you're, if your projects are stunning and beautiful, but, and you got a thousand followers and you get like five likes, I'm like, this doesn't feel real to me. You know, I don't, I'm not looking for someone to just post projects and then post pictures and then that's it that they call it a day. It's kind of like, I want to know that you have people that, you know, confide in you for your opinion. And, you know, you're actually, you have some sort of weight in, in what you're actually posting. Uh, I see a lot, especially on Instagram. And I think that's kind of almost the danger of social media is like someone's, you know, Hey, I have 11,000 followers and I'm like, sign me up, you know? And then I look and they get 20 or 30 likes. And I mean, on my personal page, I'll get, you know, 20 likes for doing nothing. And I'm like, I don't even do anything, you know? So I'm like, <laughs> well, I don't know if, you know, I think that engagement piece and especially looking through people's comments and looking to see if they're more, you know, if they're actually real people and genuine, that's what I look for. Um, it's not as much of a numbers game. I don't think as it, as it used to be like, I'll pick someone if they have, they have only 200 followers, but they get a hundred likes per picture and their friends are like, yes, I love it. And they're answering questions. Like, I'm going to pick that over someone that has a big following and isn't using it. Yeah, more of a dedicated following versus the size right. of your following. Yeah, right. yeah. But on that following, make sure that you are following the companies that you're. Right. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah the people that That's are like, a good I would love to work with you. And yeah, then they're not following me. And I'm like, would you, though? Because yeah, <laughs> what do you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> And also don't take offense if you follow a company that you really want to, but they don't follow you back. That's that's not an uncommon thing for companies not to follow back, especially if you're on their design team. That's a whole different story. Like if you've already been part of the company. But, you know, if you're just kind of a new face, then they get a whole bunch of people that follow them and they may not reciprocate just because they've got a bajillion other 10,000 things going on as well. So don't take offense to that at all. I get excited <laughs> if one of them follows me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We Delta still shared my my post one time, and then Cheryl contacted me, and I about jumped out of my oh, seat. Oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> it's true, it's true. <laughs> Anybody else have something to add to this particular topic? Yeah, I would say the one last thing. All of this has been like amazing advice, but I would also say don't um, apply for all design teams that you find. Um, like stick with your stay in your lane and mm -hmm. and apply for the design teams that you're actually interested in uh working with and you love their products or at least their style of products you know whatever it is um applying for everything just uh, i think washes it out too much you know and um so that would be my this is another one, and I remember um, hearing somebody say this. Also, whenever that there's different ways that companies put out calls, and it has started from, you know, sending an email with like links to resumes, and I think now people are starting to go the route of maybe a Google form that you fill in, so everything's mm -hmm. kind of honed in, and then you know, like uh, some other companies have done along the lines of tag us as you're posting stuff, you know, and put this particular hashtag in so we can see what you're actually posting versus what you did three years ago. Let's currently see what you're doing with our products, which I think is kind of smart too, yeah. you know, because then you see who's active <laughs> and right, where they're right. being active because they were looking for people from all over the place. Um, but make sure you spell the company's name correctly. <laughs> <laughs> 
as a number one. And say <laughs> um, it correctly if you video. Yep, yeah, yeah, if you're doing it on video, don't start yeah. talking, you know, it's some weird that you have no idea how to say it. Listen to other people's videos first before yeah. you do it the first time because there's multiple ways of potentially saying companies' names. So, um, <laughs> we, always get called make we always get called Maker's Mark, and I'm like, ooh, so close, but not, <laughs> you're only right there. <laughs> Sorry, somebody was, Daniel West saying, Mom said, what is this magic? This is the magic of a panel show about design teams, Daniel. Daniel, you should be on here. <laughs> yes, you should be. <laughs> oh, of which, and I just want to put this little tiny plug in there. I'm always looking, I have a new panel show every month, and I have different topics that we chat about every month. And on my YouTube channel, if you head over to Aaron Reed Makes, everybody's links are all listed down below. So if you're watching from different places and you want to follow any of these amazing people on the panel, mm -hmm. all of their links down below from their blogs or their websites. We're going to talk about blogs and websites here in a minute too. Um, Instagram, YouTubes, and also Facebook are all down there. So go like everybody. So that'd be awesome. Um, Okay, so, but if you're interested, head over to my YouTube channel, and there's a link to fill in if you're interested in being on a future panel. If that's a panel that is of topic that suits you, I guess, I don't know how to say that. Like, if it, it's in your vein of where you want to go. So, there's a Google form for that, which is what people love to use. <laughs> okay, so... It used to be, and again, I keep referring back to you because design teams have changed so much from when I started and for those of you who've done design teams for a long time, from even 10 years ago to now. I think that there has been a change in how they function to a point or how what they're looking for for members to be on the team. It used to be you had to have a blog, 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 blog. If you didn't have a blog, it's not going to work. Like that was the number one thing. But I feel like blogs have started to kind of take a little bit of a side note. And we've mentioned, you know, you may not be a video person, but you're really good on Instagram. So what is your feeling? Do you feel like we have to, be, to, as being a design team member or as applying for a member, or if you're looking for somebody, you have to have a blog or a, a website. You have to have Instagram. You have to be on Facebook. You have to have did to do video. Like, is that what companies are looking for? Or is it okay to specialize in one and be really good at that one? Open up to the panel. <laughs> Rachel's new. Rachel has three <laughs> opinions. Really She's like, <laughs> yeah. She's um, us, really expressive. Yeah. Um, my opinion on the matter is that um, you find something that you're good at and you stick with that. And maybe eventually you add another thing that you're good at and you keep going with both. I like blogging for me. And of course, other people probably look at my blog occasionally, but I don't get a ton of comments. I don't get a ton of likes on my blog. Instagram is probably 90% of where I get interaction. Video scares me. Again, this is very, very out of my comfort zone. Um, video scares me, but I don't feel the need to have a YouTube. It, it is not something that I feel is for me. And I will say that I, one of my best friends owns a company. She's not interested in her design team having blogs. She wants to see Instagram and maybe they're willing to do a Facebook live now and then, but I don't think that companies expect a blog anymore. A lot of people want to see YouTube, but I don't think a blog is expected, expected anymore. Yeah, I think video has become a bigger thing, but I still think Instagram is a big thing too. I don't know. What do you like? Anybody? Else? I think the company. It's, yeah, I, I agree. I think it depends upon the company because I'm, I kind of have my foot in both of those doors right now. And some of your companies, you know, a design team is their marketing. I, that's what's doing the marketing for them in many ways. And some of your, your companies actually have a blog because that's where they're posting tutorials. And so, you know, back to your question a second ago, one of the things that I think you need to pay attention to is what is that company looking for? If you are applying for their design team, some companies may only be looking for the social media where other companies are looking for someone who can also write a blog post. And if that company states that they're looking for a blog, people who can write blog posts, don't apply if you don't have a website or if you don't have a blog. If all you're doing is posting Instagram, that's not what that company's looking for. They, and most of the companies will clearly state whether they're mm -hmm. looking for the 
social media aspect, video aspect of it, or the blog, or a combination of the two. Um, and some are just looking for social media. So make sure that they're current, make sure that they're doing both. But um, find out what the company's looking for. Good tip. Well said. <laughs> Anybody uh, else? I, I have to say, I, my other job, I'm the editorial director at Houndstooth Media Group. And um, so I write blog posts every day, all day. <laughs> and for our website clients, we always recommend blogs um, as a way to increase your SEO. And for me personally, my blog, most of my traffic comes from Pinterest. And I don't know how I would bring in that traffic with social media. So um, my blog is, I, I look at it, I've always looked at it as my online portfolio. So when I am applying for design team jobs, it's my portfolio that I can show everybody a collection of work, you know, over the last 10 years, what I've done, what I can do. Um, you also have to know your audience. Um, if, you know, older audiences tend to not like YouTube as much or video or social media, and they like the blog format where the pictures are static or they can scroll through, they can save it, they can print it out. Like a lot of people like to print out stuff still. Um, so you have to know who, who your audience is and um, respond to what they want. But in my experience, a lot of uh, design team jobs still want those um, projects. Like a lot of them still want you to put it on their website. Um, one of the teams I'm on, I do still have to put my blog post on their site so that it brings in traffic for them. So do you feel like that's a thing? Like, and I've done that for teams too, you know, I, and I, I, sometimes I feel like that's good and that's bad because I'm like, I'm doing all this work for you. Uh, but what work. am I getting? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I only do that on my own job. stuff. I'm going to make that clear. <laughs> I, some of these jobs where they just want to give you product, which, you know, is okay depending on the circumstance. But if I am putting my content on your site and you're going to own it, then, uh, you know, to me, that's a writing job. I'm giving you pictures. I'm, you know, I'm the photographer, I'm the writer, and I expect to be compensated. We're going to talk about the money thing. Shortly. I know, yeah, Don't I won't get that. That is a topic we are definitely going to be hitting. <laughs> so, we're yeah, easing ourselves hard. into that conversation because that's a pretty hot button topic. I'm, I yeah. know for sure. <laughs> yeah. All right. So going back to where should you specialize? Blogs, EA, no websites. You know. Also, this is kind of in the same vein. Blogger was the big one, or having a WordPress, the free sites. Do you feel like? Possibly jumping into and having a paid site might be better as well because then you might get more traffic. Any I thoughts on that? I did both. Um, I'm primarily I'm on YouTube, but I've also got my blog, and I'm trying to make the time <laughs> to make a blog post for each of my videos, which doesn't always happen. So my blog's a little bit behind. Yeah, but when it comes to the design team things, I try to always make sure that I get a blog post up also, and I've got them both linked together so that. First off, they've got links to everything that I'm talking about for the company I'm working with uh, and all of that. You can put more information in a blog in written format and people can access it easier. And if they want to say, oh, I liked that card you made, let me take a look and see the picture of it and I can keep that as an inspiration photo, something like that. So having overlap, I think works out a lot. Working with Instagram too, having it in all three places and on Facebook and that the hard part <laughs> is trying to get it everywhere yep. and not feel like you're spamming everybody. Yeah. Blogs I feel like are easier if you're using affiliate links as well. Like yes. yeah. I'm, I probably should put up a link tree for my Instagram, but I'm lazy and I just have my blog there. And I say, you can go to my blog links in the bio. I've got affiliate links on there and sometimes that works. Sometimes it doesn't, but I think that, as far as additional compensation, affiliate links are, are a big thing yes. for a lot of, of yep. content creators. And whether they're an influencer, whether they're a design team member, whether they're a guest design team member, or they're just somebody that really likes the product and was like, mm -hmm. can I be an affiliate? Mm -hmm. Michaela, what do you look for? for people because you are constantly looking for people to work with and you have a team that you work with do you I mean I do video for you for number one so that's I, I don't do a blog sometimes a blog post happens because it's you know in, in accordance with that but you know our agreement is that we do video so do you have people that only do blog posts or you're looking for a while or are you really like it seems like you've kind of specialized 
a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so I will probably get into it a little later. I kind of tried to do this, like, everyone do whatever they want kind of thing, because I, like, really don't like putting people in a box of, like, you have to do a blog post, you have to do an Instagram, you have to do YouTube, because I know that everybody has their own preferences, but I also know that you guys have your own audiences for a reason. Like, who am I to tell you where your audience is? That's not my job. Um, and so I think in a way I, again, I think I, we all have learned lessons. This is one I've learned the hard way um, <laughs> that I kind of like, I really wanted to kind of let people like, tell me where your followers are. Like, and I also put that in how I, you know, structured the team and like products they work with. Like, I don't, tell people they have to work with certain products. Like if you don't want to work with dyes and you only want to work with stamps or you only want to work with paper or whatever it is, um, it's again, it, it hasn't gone as rainbows and sunshine as it sounds. Um, but I still, I still like to have that level of individualism there because I feel like, again, you guys have built your followers for a reason and it mm -hmm. seems, it doesn't seem genuine when, you know, we all could probably name designers that we know that are like, on two design teams and all they post is just two brands. And you're like, I get it. You're on their design team, you know? <laughs> um, so it's hard for me again. Like I, when I pick people to work with, I like really, really like deep dive on them. I like want to make sure that like the stuff that they're work with, they, they're actually putting time and effort into it. They're, they're familiar with the products, you know, they know how to die cut. It's not their first time. Um, they're familiar with supplies. It's like, I, I just want to make sure that whatever is there is genuine. And again, I don't, I try not to play that numbers game either because it it's you know everybody starts with zero followers at some point so yep. um it's more just kind of what more, it's really content related honestly and even if someone like doesn't have great pictures obviously i'd like to see the pictures but um if i can tell that they spent an hour on their card and the lighting's bad i'm like you're still an advocate for our brand and um i think that that genuine piece is something that i look for and, um I know it's different because we're a lot smaller of a brand too. So I kind of like rely on, on the good heartedness of people to be like um, kind of ask for projects and uh, what they want to work with. Cause I know we don't have a brand name that everyone's like, Oh my God, I would die to work with you kind of thing. So um, I try to kind of take that more personal approach. Um, I mean, Aaron, you do video because you, you do video and that's what you're good at and that's what you like. Um, I have some designers that like they only like literally are only on Instagram and like that's it. That's all they want to do. But like every time they post, people are asking questions. The projects look beautiful. Like so, it's re it really depends. Um, I do try to stay away from people that post everywhere, and it doesn't really seem you know it seems a little mm -hmm. artificial. And that's if I wanted an ad, I would just run an ad. You know, mm -hmm. it's a great way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. All right, we're going to tackle the big topic, the question, the money question. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm bum bum. Okay, so when I first started, um, and I think everybody was at this point at some point in their career, it was a hobby. You love doing it for the most part. I, and I'm just speaking of what I did, but it was a hobby. I started getting comfortable with taking pictures of some of my stuff, and this is my story. I took pictures, I actually posted it up at scrapbook.com, and I had it was all scrapbook pages at the time. And then I had people making comments on some of the stuff I did, and I got asked, hey, do you work with companies? Have you ever worked with companies? Have you ever thought of design teams? And it kind of trickled. And then I realized that I could send my pictures off to somebody. There was design team calls I could try out, and sometimes I made it, and sometimes I didn't. Um, but that was only for product. Now, as it went from being a hobby to something a little bit more than a hobby, to now it's a career, I can't just work for product because I'm doing things where I need to buy lights, I need to get programs, I'm doing all these different things, and so I'm giving a higher level than I did 10 years ago. That's the other side of it. There's more I can offer you in return versus what I did. So there is a monetary expectation for me at this point, but back then there wasn't. But then I have to look on the flip side, you know? I'm starting to make some of my own products. I can't afford with my tiny little business to pay somebody if I choose to do a design team. You know, it would have to be for product. And I think back, well, if I was what I was back then, I think that would be totally fine. But again, what is your opinion on this? Open to the panel. <laughs> I think you're right. It, again, it depends on the company and where they're at. Um, in a previous life, I, <laughs> I've worked for businesses for forever and have only been doing the crafting thing for the last several years. Um, from the business side of things, 
you can only pay for what you can pay for. A company, if, if a company can't afford to hire somebody, but they can afford to give product that's going to cost less to them than the actual value of it is, then they're going to be willing to do that. And a lot of crafters may be willing to do this you know, on the flip side, accept those products because, oh my God, I didn't have to pay for this and it's worth this much money. And I get to play with all these fun things. And so it works out. It's kind of a balancing act. Both sides work well. Um, if one side is giving more than the other, then it's not so good. Like if you're getting free product but you're not doing quality work, the design team is not going to want you anymore. If you are the company and you're not giving value for what the designer is doing for you, they're not going to want to stick with you. So it's really a balancing act between the two, and it depends on where the company and the crafter, they're going to meet at, at some point. And when they do, then that's going to work out. If it yeah. doesn't, then it's going to fall apart. One or both are going to quit, and they're not going to be happy with the other party, and they might start bad-mouthing, and we don't want that either. Yeah, no. The, the one thing I will say on this is that, and this is kind of my go-to, if you're asking somebody to do a job for you and creating a product, so, you know, doing a post, doing a video, doing that, their payment could definitely be product, but don't ask your design team to buy a product from you and then create yes. a post for free. That's a big fat no-no in my book, and I think yeah. everybody is nodding in agreement that <laughs> yeah. you don't pay to do a post for free for a company. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> and there's some companies that they just give you a, a small discount and a lot to of me that I, you're still paying them yeah, to do a post again, for them. Again, <laughs> on what they're asking for. If they're asking for something outrageous and they're giving yeah. you a 5% discount or whatever, then it doesn't work. Yeah. Sorry, Cheryl, you were about to say something and I had to interject with the. Oh, no, I agree today. with everything so far. <laughs> and I work for companies who do a little bit of both, you know, right now and mm -hmm. stuff um, and have in the past. And, and, you know, one thing that you'll hear a lot is, uh, you know, product won't pay my mortgage. Well, and that's true. Product is not going to pay your mortgage. But if it's product, if you're being offered product that you could use that mm -hmm. would help you and would save you from putting that money out, many times I will work for product if it's product that's going to benefit me and my mm -hmm. business. Um, you know, it's not just take, I do not need any more tape runners right now. So, <laughs> you know, I don't need that. But, you know, there's, there's times that it is beneficial for me to accept the product because that saved me that money that I would need to pay my mortgage or my groceries. And now mm -hmm. I can play with that and do something in return. So um, there is, there's both sides. There's three sides to that coin, you know, multiple. So well, plus you get um, exposure as a design team member when you're working with these other parties as products. So again, they get exposure yeah. to your audience and you get exposure to all the other people that may be interested in seeing another way of using those products. Yes. So it, like, it's, it's a balancing act and a lot of times it'll work out. Yeah, I always try to ask people, like, I always try to ask them, like, what they want to work with, because I've heard of, you know, design teams where they just send you a bucket, you don't know what you're getting, you open the box, and it's like, use it all in a month, and you're kind of like, okay, you know, so I feel like part of that piece is like, again, like, I, I expect that the de designers know what projects they like to work on, what their audience mm -hmm. is like. Um, and usually if I'm like, hey, you know, can you squeeze this set in, you know, you think this would fit, I'll, I'll make suggestions, but um, it's usually pretty driven by the designer at that point where I'm kind of like, you know, what, what do you want to work with? What caught your eye? Because that's, mm -hmm. you know, your followers are following you for a reason. So chances are that's going to catch their eye too. I'm not going to force some sort of product on you that, that you're not interested in. I think that makes, it almost is like shifts the attitude towards the compensation as well, where it feels more transactional if you don't mm -hmm. actually want the products that you're, you know, you're like, kind of like, I didn't ask for this. I'm not a fan of yeah. it. Um, but like, I guess I'll do it for, you know, X amount of dollars. And then it just kind of becomes a weird relationship. And I don't, I don't want to have that type of um, relationship with, a, with our designers. I want them to like actually like our products. And if you don't like them, that's fine. And you know, don't, I won't waste your time. You won't waste mine. Um, it's just kind of, you know, that piece is, it makes it weird. And you want to make sure that they, they actually enjoy working with you. Right. Yeah. And when you apply for a team, most teams will be straight up front. Either they're, mm -hmm. they're, this is what, you know, we're providing. So if that's not what you're interested in receiving, don't apply for that team. Exactly. Right. 
Yeah. You've got a couple questions feel? on there. You've got um Aaron, you've got Nerdy Crafter yeah. that's saying she's a brand new design team member. These words are like that. Oh, oh, okay. she, she corrected hers. There it is. I love that. Yep. I'm so glad. That was part of the point of doing this panel is like inspiring. We've all done this for a long time, but I know all of us have gotten questions along yeah. the lines of anything along this, you know. So yeah. It's, and then Shirley's it, asking if any of us are from Canada or any of you guys. I'm originally from, from Canada. Does that count? <laughs> I've been to Canada. Anybody from Canada? Been. I haven't been there, but I do want to say hi to Shirley because she comes to my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here's another. So in, in tying into this, sometimes companies don't pay up front for posts, but you're posting on their YouTube channel or you're posting on their blogs and they allow you to put your affiliate link on those. So they might have a way bigger following than you do personally, and they get more people coming to their site repeatedly. So I sometimes might get paid just as much as I would if I did a post on my own site um, by That's doing a post point. on theirs, even though I didn't get paid for it because I got paid on the back end with affiliate links. So there's that to consider as well. So just yeah. kind of keeping that in mind. I've never been, I've never been on a design team that I was paid most design teams that I've worked for have been, honestly, like I become friends with the owner or friends with the uh, DT lead. Um, I have been paid by companies, but not as a de design team member. Um, but I have made plenty of money as an affiliate. I have received product that I wanted and product that I didn't want, but still made to work. Sometimes <laughs> stuff that I don't want to work with ends up being the things that get the most interest. But it happens. Uh, Challenges. <laughs> well, yeah, you, it's almost like you have to really put thought into it. And sometimes that sometimes that falls flat. And sometimes that is like this is a stroke of brilliance. Um, but I I find that typically I work with very small companies and I have been very lucky to have personal relationships with the owners. And I find that what I've seen on the backside is oftentimes video creators will get compensated with payment in addition to the product. Um, whereas bloggers and Instagram don't necessarily get some sort of monetary payment other than affiliate links. That's been my experience. I wonder why that is. I, I think that I think that the thought is that video editing and making sure that your video looks good takes a longer time than sitting down and writing a blog. And I'm sure in some some circumstances that's true and I'm sure it can be other. I take a long time to blog because I really like I like words. <laughs> and I'm a video girl, 100%. <laughs> so yeah, I it's why there's balance. Yeah. <laughs> right. And to piggyback on that, you know, I was going to say the one thing I won't ever do for free is video I, or for product because video is so time consuming. And I've been burned where I've made a video for someone and it does incredibly well on YouTube and they've monetized it. And so they're making a ton of money and getting all this traffic off it. And I got a box of supplies, which seemed great at the time. Yeah. <laughs> but so, you know, you kind of learn these lessons over time. Um, you know, in the beginning, I looked at it as an apprenticeship. It was great to get product and show you what I can do with it. You know, like we've all, we've all done that in college or whatever, you know, where we've worked for free because we're showing what we can do. And it's a great learning experience. It's a great way to meet people. But I would say if if you're like four or five years in and you're still only working for product, then if you love it, that's fine, do, do it. But if yeah. you're starting to feel resentful, then you know maybe look at what do I need to do to take it to the next level? Because you know, you, you deserve it. You know, if you're good enough that you keep making these teams, then you know, mm -hmm. maybe apply for some of those where there is, you know, even if it's just $20 a post or something, it at least shows, you know, value for your time. I think it depends on the size of the company too. Yeah, yeah. I, I love to work for startups and I'll do it for product. Like if I love what you're doing and I love what you're making, sure, like, I, cause I'm having fun. Cause I'm enjoying what I'm working with. Then, then yeah, I mean, as long as you feel valued, then 
then go for it. But I was going to, I have been burned twice by teams that, um, you get product at the beginning and then as blog posts get published, you get credit for more product and twice companies have been sold to someone else and the new owner doesn't want to honor the old contracts and design mm -hmm. team members all got screwed. So wow. just be careful. Like, you know, I've kind of learned it's, it's better to get like a month to month, like, okay, this is what I'm going to work with so that at least you're getting that product because mm -hmm. people do get burned, unfortunately. I think we've all been in that boat in some way or another. <laughs> yeah, you know, especially with, with the issues in the last year and a half with a lot of smaller companies going under, you know, like it, it's just been hard for everybody. Yeah. So here's a question. Um, is it hard sometimes to be honest about the products you receive? So for instance, you're working with a design team and they send you the products, you're working with it and you're not a fan. How do you tackle that? I'm extremely blunt and I will tell like it is, uh, I try to avoid hurting feelings, but if I find that my product isn't working correctly, or I think that what they were going for is different than what was actually produced, I make it known because uh, I feel like, especially since I said I, I work for a lot of small companies, my bosses can't better their company, can't make a better product if I'm not honest about my experience with it. Okay, I'm gonna throw this at Michaela because she's coming from the company standpoint. <laughs> have you ever had any designers? And I don't wanna throw, I'm not gonna name names about anything, but have designers come back or if you've noticed in any of the content they've put out that it's been like, I guess, I don't wanna say it in a negative way, but like <laughs> quality criticism, there we go. <laughs> um, oh, for, about the product you mean? Yeah. Has that ever happened so, on the flip side? You're like, ooh. <laughs> so we, luckily, um, we actually are a metal manufacturer. So we make all of the dyes and stuff like in our building. So I want to know about it from a consumer perspective. But I also, you know, I'll walk back into production and be like, all right, which one of you guys missed this? You know, um, <laughs> but I think it's it's important because uh, kind of what Rachel said is it's like, I'm our company is not going to get better if I just kind of sweep quality issues or whatever under the rug. Um, we have a die cutting machine. Uh, that's that's usually when I kind of start designers off, I want them to work with our machine. And I always tell them like, here's here's all the, you know, the product points, all the selling points. But I always say, you know, here's the top three complaints and you're going to get them. And this is how we address them. Um, luckily, because we actually manufacture, we're pretty confident in our products. So like if there is a quality issue, I genuinely listen to it and I want to know what the problem is because we make it in our in our building. So I want to know, um, you know, what you know, our employees are making them, you know, right right under their side of the wall um, for me. So I kind of want to know, again, from a production standpoint, like what what part went wrong. Um, right. We've had uh, because I usually let people um pick what products they want i've never had someone be like oh it turns out i didn't like this because they usually pick it themselves <laughs> um we have had um in our most recent launch actually um we sent some dyes and one of our designers was like oh my god the dyes are backwards and i was like oh my god the dyes are backwards so um <laughs> it's kind of like one of those where i'm like oh, oh god okay yeah we got to tell somebody so and i want them to tell me that and then I want them if, you know, they're doing an unboxing experience and they're like, oh my God, the dies are backwards. I want to tell them like, yes, the dies are backwards. If you order it now though, like we have the correct ones. So um, those are things where like, I'm kind of the same way where I lay it all out in the open, rip the bandaid off. I don't want to hide anything. Um, and if we do have products that, you know, if the dies aren't cutting or, you know, the machines making a weird noise, like I want to know because if, if our customer service team got something like that, I'd treat it the same way where I'd be like, oh, well, that's not good. Oh, let this, let's get you something new. Um, so luckily we've never had, um, luckily we've never had too many like actual like product quality issues, but if there are like complaints or difficulties, especially with our machine, I usually kind of tell people ahead of time, like, hey, the number one complaint is that this thing is 26 pounds. And I'll tell you why it's 26 pounds, but just warning you when you move it from your front door into your kitchen, it's going to be 26 <laughs> pounds. So, um, and then I'm kind of like, you know, I, I always ask people like, you know, I trust you to use your judgment, like don't, you know, insult our products and stuff online. But if you have concerns at all, like just at least tell me ahead of time. Um, and a lot of times it's just, um, you know, something 
the dies are backwards and ooh. but um, <laughs> I guess I, like, I had one situation that was like that where I got a stamp and I was doing the unboxing and I I'd, sometimes I try to do them where I've never opened the box before and I did it and it was the wrong image on the back of the stamp because usually there's an image oh, yeah. that goes with the stamp as an example and it was for the wrong thing and I just quickly flipped it over and then as soon as the video was over I sent her message yeah. I'm like and I didn't announce oh, it on yeah. video I wasn't yeah. gonna like put it on point but I yeah. sent her a message going hey um you might have, and I just got one of the yeah. spec ones, and it was a sample, right. and it wasn't what was in the, and I was like, yeah. okay, I'm just making yeah. sure that you knew, but I wasn't right. going to yes. tell everybody right. in the world why Please, I was guys. live. <laughs> right. If that does ever happen, though, just, you can, if you're in the middle, you can be like, ooh, yikes, you're gonna have to tell Michaela about that, because, I mean, I don't, our marketing team is, is two people, so it's like, if I didn't catch it, and she didn't catch it, I didn't get caught and that's that's it you know what i mean like we're all people so it's not yeah i don't think anyone um you know we all want it to look nice and shiny and perfect and sometimes it's just not and if we pretend like everything's always going to be 120 percent correct it, that's it's not going to happen that way what we do no. what we can control is like when there is a die on the wrong package like we will get you the correct one or right. you know kind of figure out in real time how we're going to solve that um, but I'm, I'm usually pretty open about like, if there's going to be issues or if there are issues, um, tackle them right away. I don't, again, I don't really try to hide them because it's, again, it's either me or the, or the product manager that missed it. And that, yeah, there's usually not an excuse. It's just, we missed it. And <laughs> so it happens. Yeah, right. as else? Design team, as design team members and as influencers in the industry, you should be honest, but I think Michaela hit on this a minute ago too. That doesn't mean that you just slam somebody and insult them or be negative. You need to do it in a, you know, constructive criticism is one thing. Mm -hmm. Your professional feedback is vital to these companies right. because these companies are looking at you as their professionals and knowing how to work with these products. So when you give that feedback, that is important. But if you just put yourself out there and you start slamming companies, you're giving you know, just snarky negative comments, um, you're out the door and you're not going to get much work with many other companies in your future mm -hmm. either. Sure. Oftentimes we're the first customers that receive yes. their product. We're the first mm -hmm. people that get to touch it and actually play with it because mm -hmm. for a die creator, maybe they didn't get to actually touch it. They only got to do it with an SVG that they created, mm -hmm. yep. tried mm -hmm. to make it work and it worked perfectly there. But the depth of the die isn't right so it's not it's not embossing it's actually cutting or whatever it may be right. so i feel like as That's a design true. team member you being authentic with your boss about what their product is or is not doing for you is important i can also speak from a company standpoint that if a design team member is putting out one design one style consistently and they are not changing it up it, it it falls flat every time and it's not something that's going to make me as a social media manager want to try to put the same same layout every time like my mm -hmm. customers aren't going to click on it i'm not going to grow my following i'm not going to sell a product because oh didn't they already see that from you mm -hmm. right right Yep. Mm -hmm. Anybody um, else on this topic? I, I was going to interject. A lot of design teams have um, secret Facebook groups. So <laughs> that is where we get to provide direct feedback to the people yeah. that we're working with. So sometimes we will get, you know, we'll get asked, what do you think about these patterns or what do you think about this? And so we have a chance to interact with the manufacturers directly. And then sometimes we'll get product first and then we can give feedback and they can fix it before it goes out to the public. So, you know, um, there's lots of opportunities for you to work these issues out before it goes onto your YouTube channel or website or blog or whatever. Absolutely. And it's fun to get those sneak peeks and, you okay. know, kind of yeah. be a part of making something new. It, it's exciting and it's fun to, you know, see what happens behind the scenes. I get so excited when I get my quarterly package from iCrafter. I'm like, what's coming? Yeah. <laughs> How did I use this? Now I have to figure it out. Yeah. I know. I always get excited for Michaela's emails where she's like, we have a new launch. I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait. <laughs> They're so cute. They just keep getting cuter and cuter. 
<laughs> this is kind of relevant, but kind of not. And people are asking like what percentage of your business when you're posting comes from affiliate links. So for instance, let's say you're getting, um, well, it doesn't really matter if you're getting paid for the post or not. It kind of hits on what we're talking about. So anybody have any thoughts on this? 100% of my income for my crafting comes from affiliate links. Wow. <laughs> I suck at affiliate links. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> so, I, yeah. I mean, I work for small companies and I, I, I work for a lot of these companies on the side as an employee. I do not consider that my crafting income. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I lump it all together as one big bubble because it all they're all interlacing with each other. And, you know, I got this because of that and this, you know, it's it, all one big bubble for me. No, I, I get I get sense. you. Yeah, <laughs> get it. OK. I mean, I, yeah. I say that I work for these companies. I, I happily will tell you I, I am employed by iCrafter. I will happily tell you I am employed by Pear Blossom Press. I will happily tell you that I work on the side for one of my best friends at Sassy and Crafty. I, I will happily tell you that, but I do not, I personally do not feel that that is my crafting income. I feel that that is my value as a social media manager, my value as a, I guess, influencer to a certain extent, my, my ear to the ground, you know, my input, mm -hmm. what, I, what I'm hearing other crafters say, I feel like there is a huge line for me as far as as what i'm getting paid for i don't think i've ever done a full breakdown but it's less than probably cl close to 30 percent range for me i would say because i've got and that that's one thing i will say that if this wants to be a business for you and you want to go more into like as a getting paid to do design teams and you've put yourself to that level don't put all your eggs in one basket and hope for money coming in from one thing. Like expect to put your, do the affiliate links, look for paid jobs if that's your thing. You know, have a blog and put AdSense on there. Aim to get monetized on all the different social media platforms that you possibly can and look for money coming in from a lot of different ways because you never know when one stops working or a channel gets turned off or this or that or the other. So, mm -hmm. you know, the more places you have opportunity to bring in income if that's what you're looking for, I would say do it. <laughs> I applied for AdSense too early, and now I can't figure out how to get it to reconsider me. So, oh. like, AdSense is a nope for me. Mm. Oh. That sucks. I like my AdSense paycheck. <laughs> yeah. Especially on Very YouTube. Very nice little paycheck every month. <laughs> it does. It does. I probably could figure it out eventually, but it it always comes up at just weird opportunities for me. I'm like, oh, I'm going to look at that now. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Not enough hours in the day. No, <laughs> not. Research when you can make stuff. Yeah. When you guys do affiliate links, are they usually provided like by, by the actual company that's selling it? Like, do they have them connected to their actual site? Because I've, so our company, like, we don't do any affiliate links, but I've had people say, hey, you know, this website sells your stuff and I have an affiliate link through them. Can I use them? And I'm like, yeah, that's fine. Do, you know, I mean, we sell it either way, right? So um, when you guys do put affiliate links, are you getting them from the companies that you're actually working for? Or is, I know, oh. like, some people do Amazon and, so, you know. I would say all of the above. Yeah, <laughs> of my affiliate links are to the company directly. I would rather link directly to the small company that I work mm -hmm. for than to a small company because realistically all the companies that I affiliate for are small to a small company that I don't actually have any vested value in. Like I am emotionally connected to these companies. Right. I I worked for one company for five years and I considered it, I considered myself a part owner in my head, like emotionally, mentally. And, you know, that separation about killed me, but I still love the company. I still love mm -hmm. the owner. So I'm still going to put my affiliate link to them rather than anyone else mm -hmm. because right. I'd rather promote people. Right. No, no, I get that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I think if there's a direct link to that company and I'm working with that company, then I'd like to use it. But on the flip side, I also have share a sale. So, you know, yeah. if it's a small company and I'm, there may not be, you have to hit a certain threshold before you get paid from that smaller company. So if you don't hit that threshold with that, then you're never going to see that money until you hit the 50 or the 100 or whatever they're setting their cap at. But with share sale, it all goes into one giant pot mm -hmm. and I'll get paid that out much faster. Yeah, because that's it may only so share sale mostly. Um, and then there are one or two companies that don't work through share sale and they have right. just their late program. So then I'll do that um, as well. And I, I would say probably maybe 10 percent of my income is from affiliate sales at this point. Mm -hmm. My personal favorite is when brands sell on Amazon. It's always great to link it to Amazon because then if people buy other stuff when they click through, then it increases your revenue. <laughs> so that, you know, like share a sale is great too, but I, I do better with Amazon. I need to set up my Amazon. I need to do, do it. it. Yeah. It's not Amazon's a lot smaller though in terms of, yeah, you might get all the sales from all the other stuff, but, but a $500 small. item, you only may make $10 <laughs> Plus, just because um, it's 2%. <laughs> Yeah. Plus, they don't they don't um, reimburse you at all for products that you purchase on yeah. Amazon or your family. I don't understand <laughs> that. When they say no friends and family, it's like all of my crafty tribe is my friends and they are my family. So how do they know? Yeah. Whereas Sheriff so, doesn't I mean, care. You can buy anything yeah. through Sheriff and get your money back. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like my in laws live in Ohio. I'm in Florida, and my mother in law shops on Amazon all the time. I don't get make a dime from anything that she does, even if she uses my links. Oh, wow. We've seemed to hit an affiliate links like question scenario here. <laughs> we go with where you guys are asking us to go. So, um, so posting on blogs for companies, do you put affiliate links? I, I vote yes, because I especially yes, if I'm not getting paid for that post. Yeah. I vote yes, but I've done it and they didn't allow any, any links except to their store. Mm. Not even a fair. I mean, it wasn't even an affiliate link. It was just. Did you get story. paid for that blog post? No, nope. no mm. payment, no, um, no product, no nothing. So. I got exposure and I got to learn how to write blogs better. That's what mm. I got out of that one. Wow. So it, it was an educational you. experience and I did get, I feel like I got value for it, but uh, nothing monetary. So it goes back to finding out what the company does offer and what you're going to get out of it. Yeah. Um, so d some companies will allow it and some don't. Um, uh, some will let you use the products that from from their own company or products that they have or they'll let you use links for products mm -hmm. that they have relationships with. So, you know, different companies do collaborations and stuff. So you'll have them that you can do there, too. Um, mm -hmm. So find out what your company allows you to do. Yeah. Uh, it's different if you're posting if you're posting the blog post on your own blog mm -hmm. or company's project then I think you I depending on the relationship I would say you could use personal links as well as company links back to that company uh, but if you're posting on their web on their blog, right that right. was the situation their blog you couldn't use anything other than yeah. their their website Right. right on my own personal blog, I can put whatever I want to there. That's mine. Yes, you should always be able to put yeah. whatever you want on your own blog. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it's always been my experience that you don't put an affiliate link for for the right. company blog, put affiliate links for the company blog. But it's interesting for me to hear the other people, bigger names than I, <laughs> feel that that should be allowed. And it kind of makes sense in my brain and maybe that's something that I take back to the companies that I work for so that they can consider it and they can understand why. Well, I kind of look at it from the point of view like, okay, you've sent me a product. Yes, that's great. But um, if I'm posting on your blog, you're not paying me to do that. And that like your payment was the, was the product. That's great. But mm -hmm. if I'm writing a post on your blog or you're wanting me to put a video up on your YouTube channel, then I should be able to put my links because I can't monetize your sites. So this right. is my way of getting a little bit of payment is mm -hmm. because I've put my work and effort onto that. So that is my return in terms and of payment. And that's an I've... extra incentive for the company to give to their designers for them, for the designers to want to work with them. I mean, the more that a company can do for the person that's going to be designing for them, the more the designer is going to want to work for them. Yep. It makes sense. Yeah. If, if, you're doing if, if somebody else will do it and that company won't, 
you'll go to the one that that'll do more for you. That's true. Just another little note here, though, when you're when you're posting for another company and they do ask you to post on their website, for example, um, and you can put affiliate links however you can. Regardless whether you put affiliate links or not, make sure when you're posting a project on that manufacturer's website that the focus of the project is that Absolutely. manufacturer's mm -hmm. products. Mm -hmm. um, multiple that times I've point. pulled posts because, it, you know, the product that we're asking them to promote is the afterthought, not the mm -hmm. actual main, you know, highlight of that specific post. So if you're just throwing in affiliate links just to throw affiliate links or links to yeah. other products or whatever, not going to work. So make sure that, you know, for that post, it's specific to that company. That goes and don't back put to a competitor's you. link on oh, their no, 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 that goes back to the design, the equal value. The designer needs to give quality work that is acceptable yes. to the design team. The design mm -hmm. team needs to give whatever compensation to the designer that is equal to the work that the person's doing. If it's not a fair trade, it doesn't work. Yeah. So, and this is just a blanket statement. It doesn't matter yeah. if you're posting on your blog or their yeah, blog or their YouTube or do YouTube. No but, work. But, do, no, but don't use a competitor's direct competitor's oh, product no. in the same video. And no. if you would like, oh, I don't have that specific <laughs> shape of die, like for Maker's Movement, then I will cut it off camera and have it and say, oh, because maybe I just don't have it in my inventory, but they sell it. And I'll just be, yeah, the circle is available or whatever it is. Exactly. But I won't show the other companies die making a cutter or whatever it might or, be like, or I think if that's you just do a have term. to use a competitor and you, your company doesn't necessarily have that exact thing just say from my stash yeah yeah if, yeah. if it is it is a design team pro project mm -hmm. just say from my stash <laughs> <laughs> Because we all have one because we, yeah. <laughs> we all have a stash oh yeah <laughs> we all have one <laughs> Barbara, you're okay to watch this for sure. Yes. We're not really getting into how to get paid for making product. This is more about being on design teams. Maybe that'll be another topic of a show. So I don't want to ignore your question, but um, this is not about how to sell your, your goods that you've made. That's not the point of this. Okay, so here's another question from our nerdy crafter. I love it. <laughs> um, is there a specific style or medium when applying to be a designer, or is it good to have a variety? Variety. I'm always yeah. trying something new. <laughs> Variety. Show that you are able to do mm -hmm. all sorts of things. Show that you're willing to try all sorts mm -hmm. of things. I touched this a little bit earlier, but if you have the same, it just looks Boring. like a <laughs> project that yep. maybe you switched out a truck for a tree. <laughs> variety. Variety, variety. And sometimes it's going to be that you knocked it out of the park and it's an amazing amazing project and sometimes it's going to be like mm, it's not my best but i learned from this and i yeah. think that next time i'll do better learning from your mistakes is a huge part of crafting and there's no such thing as a mistake there's only a chance for embellishment right exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but i think that showing a variety is so important in general in general we are not but cookie cutters on the side note let's say you're a card maker right mm -hmm. um and all of a sudden you're trying to try out for a team that is all about mixed media but you've never done mixed media before so that's again knowing your yeah. company yeah. so yes variety is good maybe in your vertical right yes. so if you're a card maker try all different kinds of cards and maybe yes. different things on cards and maybe going and doing like tags or you know a scrapbook page yes. but if you're a mixed media artist you know, like, and, and there can definitely be crossover. I mean, I do a little bit of everything, but it's hard to be good at everything. It's better to be good at, or pretty good at maybe one or two things. Kind of like when we're back to talking about with social media, it's hard to be the highest of numbers in every single, yeah. in, you know, social media that's out there. Pick one that you're good at and then be really good at it. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think actually it's most important to just be authentic in whatever yeah. you're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for me personally, I've struggled with this for a long time because I thought seeing a lot of other influencers and designers that really focus on a thing and they're like, I'm good at this thing and I do this thing. And I'm not saying it has to be like the same 
design every time, but they're a card maker or they're a quilter or they're a whatever, right? An upcycler. I really passionately love to do all the things. So I struggled forever to be like, well, Cassie's my new best friend. I think, <laughs> I think we're all there. Yep. My dog's over in the corner going, uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I love you can hear my dog. <laughs> But I just decided one day, I'm like, you know what? Actually, my thing is that I do everything. Like, yeah, I, I don't do everything, but I do a lot of different stuff. And I, and I, I guess I classify myself as mostly a mixed media artist because I feel like that encompasses so much. Um, but I love jewelry and I love, I do love fabric and I'm a quilter on the side and I don't post any of that. But, you know, I'm an art journaler and I love, still I love cards. And I sometimes will make, I'm not really a scrapbooker, but I like to do, um, like I like to take boards, you know, media boards and do like a scrap of layout that you could hang on the wall or something yeah. like that. So, and I found that um, the people that really um, tend to come hang out with me every week and follow me and, and want to, and are interested in what I have to say and what I'm doing are the same way. And they just didn't have a place to be because, you know, because a lot of people are doing their thing. So I think whatever you authentically love to do and whatever feels good to you, you do that. And it's okay if it's one thing and it's okay if it's 50 things. Yeah. But, but I wouldn't just... necessarily try out for a design team in those 50 things. No. You know what I mean? Like I like to dabble in things. I'm not going to try out for a jewelry design team because I'm okay at it, but I'm not good enough to make product for a brand or like, I'll scrapbook on my own. I'm not going to create it for someone else because I'm nowhere near the level where these other paper crafters are at. So, you know, it's great to dabble, but have a, a sense of identity, like naturally pursue things and find what you gravitate towards. Like I wasn't sure either at first when I started and it was like, you know what? I really like home decor. So I dabble in a lot of things and most of my projects are gonna be something that you use in your home because that makes me happy. Like that's just where my brain goes. So okay, those okay, so the, my, I, Brandon, just, just admit it, you like creepy. <laughs> That is her niche, creepy, like little baby hands. I don't know if you've seen her thing lately, like baby like eyeballs. I mean, uh, it's, her niche is creepy. There's a restaurant. Where was Creativation at? There is a restaurant wherever Creativation was two years ago, almost three years ago. At this In Arizona. Point, it would be right up your alley. <laughs> She's like the coolest stuff. I mean, I don't know how your brain oh, does this. That. It's awesome. But I'm just like, I look at your stuff sometimes and I'm like, oh, but I have to keep looking. <laughs> but, I have to keep looking. <laughs> but to Cassie's point, like, it's gratifying that there are brands that aren't scared by that. And they're like, you know what? We love quirky. We love weird. Mm -hmm. And, and, and people have been very welcoming and nice. And, you know, like there's, there's something for everyone. You just have to find your niche, you know, find the people who make you happy and you make them happy. <laughs> yeah, we'll see sure. again from a company side because I get to work on the back side of a couple different companies. Mm -hmm. It's really hard for a company to feel that you as a designer is going to do well for their product mm -hmm. if they can't and they, they don't have the visual that you can do this. Yeah. Um, I work for a dye company and there's a ton of stampers that apply. And don't get me wrong. I was a stamper. I, mm. I I played with dyes, but I was not a dye user. You know, there's a, a, there's this level of difference, um, and it's hard to envision an interactive project if everything that you've done is a flat lay, because that's not going to show their product in the best best light as a flat lay continuously. But there's no reason not to, if you're on their design team, take that product that they have, even though it's meant for cards, and try it out on something different and yes. show the versatility of it, which is totally exactly. cool. Totally. That's a way to like broaden that. Yeah. yeah. Totally agree. I love there. doing that. Uh, yeah. I'm just saying that like when you're applying for a design team, if you know that it, it a lot of what they do is interactive dies, then maybe you should break out those interactive days. Mm -hmm. Maybe you should place the order if they give enough time and, and get mm -hmm. get a product in, in your hands and actually make something that would make them go okay she can do this yeah yes sometimes it's, one project makes it makes or break applying for yeah. a design team yeah all right so you can use that product okay. um is very important but i just wanted to say too because we're kind of on this topic of your style and who does what mixed media cards 
you know, just one little bit of encouragement here. If you do apply for a design team and for example, you're not selected this year, don't take that personally. That may not, that doesn't always mean that your work wasn't good enough or your numbers weren't good enough or something else it might many times just mean that you weren't the right fit for that team for that year because many of the teams do try to find maybe a good little brain you know a good little variety so somebody who can do scrapbook pages somebody who can do cards somebody who does mixed media somebody who can do this somebody who has a clean somebody who's a little messy and so if if that spot is already filled, there may not be a spot for you this yeah. year. So don't there's only be... so many spots. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Use that so, as an opportunity to integrate yeah. yourself into yes. their fan club Facebook. Use it as Absolutely. an opportunity to make sure that you do place an order and you do get some of their products in your hands, tag them on social media, you know, yeah. become, become no, a self not the end. Yeah, become right. a self promoter as well as promoting a small company that you think rocks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, absolutely. And tag them on social media. We keep yeah. saying that, but yeah, I'm telling you, I, I've that talked to so many designers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so many designers are afraid to do it because they're afraid that it's salesy, or they're afraid that oh, well, they're just going to think I'm just trying to get their attention. Heck, yes, you are trying to get their attention. <laughs> tag yeah. them. Make sure you're I, using the right hashtags and at at tag them at. mention them on social media yes and sometimes they reach out to you to get the photos so they can put them up on their yes. page yes yeah cheryl did it <laughs> and if you're not sure what hashtags to use go to their instagram go, see what they're mm -hmm. using on their social media copy paste that what's relevant yep. yeah. Yeah. yes yeah i mean it's such so, a big deal it we we buy from these companies because we we become come connected to them in an emotional manner, not just because they make something cool, right? right? And yeah, maybe you're not getting paid for it, but maybe you're helping them make the dollar that makes the difference between them closing and them staying open another month. Very sure. true. That's true. Yep. And you, and it, you know, I think we said it earlier, you never know what opportunities may lay down the road. Right. I can't yeah. tell you all of the you know, for I'm I'm a teacher too. So um, I mean, I haven't been traveling for the last year and a half now very much. But prior to that, <laughs> I traveled all over the country teaching, and the relationships that I nurtured and developed way back when I was just getting started has helped me a whole lot with my teaching because now I have companies going, "How can I help you teach?" Yeah. You know, yeah. so mm -hmm. that's payment in its own kind too. So just kind of think about you know, keep those doors open. Mm -hmm. You never know. Yeah. Yeah, the, the no is not always a no. And I've had companies yes. come back and go, well, no, not now, for whatever reason, we're looking for this, or we already have that. Um, but make sure you try it again next year, or I just do it again anyway, you know? And yeah. sometimes like a door closes, a window opens in another way. So Absolutely. don't take it too personally if you were not selected. It's not a personal thing. It's the company's looking at what's best for their big picture. and. Sometimes they even take the names out of the, the loop. They're looking at something completely different. They're not looking to see what those names are. So that also brings us to the next topic is drama in design teams. <laughs> no. <laughs> None. <laughs> Out. If you create drama, somebody's going to tell somebody else. Somebody's going to tell somebody else. Somebody's going to tell somebody else. I know one woman that has lost out on at least three design teams because I know people and I know how she behaved towards someone else and yeah. Mm -hmm. no one wants that on there. I mean, yeah, people do not want drama. People don't want bullies. People want people that are going to be flexible. People want people that are going to be honest with a, I'm overwhelmed right now. I need help. Mm -hmm. That's just as important because if you create a project that just is falling flat and you're not putting out, your best work mm -hmm. because you have a life that just blew up then yeah it's yeah. it is a relationship it is yes mm -hmm. anybody yeah. else comment on the drama part <laughs> sorry <laughs> i i'd say uh, you know the biggest extent of drama that i've seen most of the time is people not completing projects on time and continually making excuses um yeah uh 
I'm kind of surprised that sometimes people will get to that level where they get on a team and then month after month, they're always late or can't get things done. And, and like she said, people talk, you know, a lot of design team coordinators used to be on design teams and we all know each other and talk to each other. Um, so, you know, you don't want to get a bad reputation <laughs> and um, kind of on that, um, you know, especially with Facebook, um, if you're in these secret groups, then you have to friend your coordinators and the other members of the team. So you want to be conscientious of what image you're projecting, even on your personal timeline. Um, you know, I'm not saying that you can't be yourself, but just be aware that if you are continually provoking people or, or, or saying controversial things, it kind of stays in the back of people's minds and it, it could potentially follow you later. So, you know, really just be nice. Be not, you know, it's, it's I, I tell people like what a job. I mean, yes, I like, tell none of us would be doing that office. kind of stuff. Exactly. exactly. Pretend like when you post something, you are announcing it to the whole office. Exactly. You, you, are. you, you, you hit reply time. all. When, right. you, when you send a comment to a fellow design team member, I mean, when you, when you, when, when you send a message, mm -hmm. because she's going to tell her friends, this person was mean to me, look at what she said. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, just, just a, a private message is not always private. <laughs> no, it's not. Keep that in mind. Don't ever put it in writing. Don't ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can videotape my, my, I can, my phone, I can literally go ahead and make it so that it records. So yep. Private. Exactly what Liz just said. It's yep. so small. And everybody knows like everybody. Yeah. yeah, treat it like a job. Even if you're working yeah. for a product, it's still a job. Be professional. Yeah. Which and also leads to like posting on time. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> like you know, you said, accidents happen, you can but communicate. Let them know what's going on. Exactly. Yeah. It's just like if you're if you're working a job and you have to call in sick today, you're not gonna just not show up. Exactly. You're gonna call your boss and let them know what's going on. Exactly. Yeah. I, know, like, I can tell one like, instance I had with Cheryl um, with Crafters Workshop uh -oh. and I was on design team on there. No, no, no. And I told her, I'm like, look, <laughs> something crazy just happened. Are you okay with me posting instead of being on this date? Can I post like three days later or can I do it the next week? I know you have a schedule and I was upfront about it. I'm like, the crap just hit the fan in the house and mm -hmm. things have happened and I'm really sorry, but yep. And she was like, thank you for being honest. And yeah, yeah, let's work. Or do you just need to skip this month? And I was like, no, I, I agree to do this. And I have like that, that work ethic. Like, no, I said I'm going to do it. I'm going to darn well do it. But I just need a couple more days. <laughs> That's yeah. what we're talking about, a good work ethic. It doesn't matter if you're working for yourself or for somebody else. You need to still have that good work ethic. You do. Yeah. yeah. And as long as it's not a chronic excuse, like, yeah. Well, that's not a good work ethic. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's not a chronic excuse. Then though, the, the, the yeah. person that you're coming to and saying, I'm sorry, this is not going to work for me. They're going to understand and they're going to empathize with you as a mm -hmm. human being. And if they don't, then maybe it's time for you to as move. a designer to yep. move on. Yeah. And that's okay. And sometimes it is. And so, and yeah. you know, if you know that it's time for you to move on, be honest, be upfront and let them know. And, and, it'll all work out good because that's better than not doing it, you know, yeah, and yeah. not only do we have to communicate, but, you know, let me turn this around a little bit now. Any teams that you work with, make sure that they communicate with you too. And that's mm -hmm. what's going to help prevent late post communications, drama, is make sure that your expectations are clear. So if you're a coordinator or if you're looking at coordinating a company, figure out what do you want from your design team and write those expectations out. If you're somebody who's looking to be part of a design team, what does that company expect to, from you as far as expectations mm -hmm. also? And if you're yeah. both communicating on those, that's what makes a successful design team. Absolutely. Michaela, you were going to say something. I kind of yeah, talked over you. Say, Sorry I've, about that. I've had, um, no, that's okay. Um, we've had designers too, especially, you know, this last year or two years have been crazy and people are saying, hey, you know, someone got sick or I have to go see family or whatever. And um, I've had a couple where I'm like, you know what, take, you know, go a week off, you know, yeah. two weeks, whatever it was. Um, but then I've seen they'll post for other teams and mm. I'm like, Mm, you know, I'm kinda, and it makes me seem kind of like I know that I am like the least organized so like I don't really have like these harsh requirements that I, you know that I'm giving my team members but then it almost makes me feel like man maybe I'm being too flexible because they're busy you know their fan you know their family stuff's going on I get it but then how come you can post for three other companies and not mine, you know I mean? so kind of I don't it's like 
again, it, it makes you kind of wonder, like, is our brand too flexible? Are we too nice? Are we not? Maybe we're not paying enough. Maybe they're not happy enough, you know, and then the spiral starts. But <laughs> kind of what I don't remember who said it, like, I'm friends with a lot of our designers, like on Facebook. So if you're like, hey, I'm taking my kids on vacation, and then I see you on vacation, I'm like, oh, that's nice. Have a good time, you know. But if you're like, oh, man, my, you know, my brother-in-law is sick, and we have to go drive 10 hours and blah, blah, blah. But then I'm like, okay, so that's happening. But also check out this great card I made. I'm like, I, I don't buy it, you know? <laughs> or so you went live the next day going, hey, everybody. <laughs> like, it could be that you were the only one that was empathetic. So I would say don't lose that empathy as a person. You're right. <laughs> You're right. Just saying, you, right. Could be the, you could be the only one that, that was empathetic enough to say, okay, you take the time that you need. And right. for them to continue on with these companies that they enjoy, they have to make it work. And maybe right. they're not getting yeah. the, the best work done for those companies. Right, right. And yeah, it that's may the be... other thing. I know ours isn't as rigid, you know, I'm not like, hey, this day, I'm like, it can be the first, it can be the 31st, anywhere in there. I don't care, just sometime during that month period. Don't lose uh, your empathy. Okay. Well, there's also the possibility that when they go, say they did do a live right after that, that they don't feel that they could be, I guess, as honest Right. With the other people they're sharing with as they were with you. Like right. they could have told all their friends, oh, I'm going on vacation. And what was really happening is their brother died and they were having to go out there, but they didn't want right. the world to know it, but they trusted right. you enough. So you never know. Right. Yeah. Right. That's so true. I mean, but don't I, be that person who says that something happened and you're lying to the company because yeah. it will come back to bite yeah. you in the butt. I mean, you should probably, or don't turn me on Facebook so I can see it. <laughs> or if you trust the person enough to like, say, hey, my brother died, but I'm telling everybody else I'm going on vacation. Right. Let them know. Do that. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, bottom line, have a good work ethic, be honest, be true, and don't try to backstab companies or other people. Exactly. I mean, that's just yep. a general rule in life anyway. Right. But, you know. <laughs> be a good and communication. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Integrity. Yep. Yes. There it is. Yes. Yep. There you yes. go. There it is. Communicate. Communication and integrity is key. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> okay. So design team requirements. I have seen some crazy requirements from design teams where, okay, we're gonna send you a box of product, you owe us uh, one video and one blog post four times a month for six months. I would say yeah. no. I'll take you. I don't know. And then I've seen, okay, we're gonna send you a box of products. We want, you know, a blog post on our blog. If you would like to do a video on top of that, that's awesome. We're gonna pay you this much and it's one time a month. So what is, what would you call a too much or like what, what's a good fit what, what's my you know the what was it the three little bears goldilocks you know okay what's, what's I'm, right? I'm going back to my fallback it really depends on the company and the person the person's experience and how good they are and how experienced they are compared to what kind of compensation they expect i mean there may be people that are able to do your first scenario where you get this box of product and I've got plenty of time. I can do four products and like projects in like a day and get it all posted just like that. And it's no big deal. Also, depending on the product, it could be something that, okay, I'm going to send you a scan and cut. And this is what I want from you. You never know. It depends on the products. It depends on the company. It depends on the person. If I, you are, go ahead, Rachel. Sorry. No, you go finish. <laughs> oh, that was basically that was I, it. It's, I think she was I done. Think I, look, I look at everything in life as it's got to be a balance. There's got to be, yep. I mean, I've seen issues at jobs where there was some kind of conflict. And then I try to look at both sides because everybody has a valid point. Right. It's when the valid point, when the points don't connect, when the intersection isn't there, when one person is, is not treating the other person right, that's when you have the conflict that does not work. Yeah. And you have to be able to look at it and decide, okay, do I need to back away from this situation? Yes. We've, so uh, I've been on the employee side with iCrafter as well as the design team with iCrafter. And we've kind of gone round and round with, you know, what are our expectations? What, how generous is our owner versus what is our design team going to be expected to do? And, um, it is a balancing act and it is about communication but i also feel like if i am getting an entire release entire month's release of 
dies, I'm getting hundreds of dollars worth of product that mm -hmm. I may or may not use, but I'm getting this generous amount of product and I'm expected just a couple of posts. I think that maybe my post should knock it out of the, out of the park. Um, my or do gift. a couple extra. Right. Or do a couple extra or um, just, just know that you are being valued by the, by the amount that you are mm -hmm. receiving, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, like we or in one post through, through show three examples, even though right. it's a singular post. Yeah, exactly. We, we settled on three posts a month and I, I don't, we've had to, me and the other employees have had to kind of remind um, our owner that you're being really generous. Asking for three is not too much. It's not a lot in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And if the design team member doesn't feel that they've got the time, then possibly there'd be a way to negotiate less product for less projects. Yep. Yep. Or maybe that team's just not a good fit for you. Go back to exactly. expectations exactly. again. Yep. Exactly. I gotta go grab my dog. She's crying. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have a comment on this topic? I, I guess it depends on the product and the medium too. Like, you know, I, you know, I see a lot of paper crafting teams at, ask for a lot, but I know a lot of paper crafters can knock out like 10 cards in an afternoon. Whereas, uh, you know, like if I'm painting an entire vanity, I'm only going to do one project because it's going to take me forever to strip it and paint it and stencil it and then photograph yeah. it. You know, like I got to move furniture so I can take pictures. So, you know, it's really about what it's worth to you. Mm -hmm. um, but I will reiterate, don't make video for free. That's <laughs> that's my line in the sand, just because it's, you know, there are so few people who will do video. So that's a valuable commodity. And if you're willing to do that and you can produce quality video, then, um, you know, make sure you're getting what you're worth. Quality video is quality. Key. Yes, quality, that's key. Like, yeah. <laughs> And, and not you know, on sideways and walking off camera to go get product and like spending 10 minutes rifling through something and didn't edit that out. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Edit, 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 edit. <laughs> An hour and a half turns into 15 minutes. This is why I'll I don't. Buy. Yeah. <laughs> That's or why Erin does all live. Prepared. No, I'm prepared though. <laughs> I have all my stuff cut ahead of time. Yeah. No, I do both. I do both. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like the vlogs. <laughs> so do you also in terms of length of team? So I've seen this happen in a lot of different gym. I've seen two different scenarios. There's been calls for also so this, this is actually two poses of two questions. How long is too long or how short is too short to be on a team? So from a coordinator standpoint, doing a call every three months is like, oh my god, I'm gonna tear my hair out. Heck but, no, I will not do it. <laughs> But on the flip side, you do a call and it's for a year and then you get some bad apples and it's like, oh, I'm stuck with the bad apples for a whole year. You know, it's kind of one of those scenarios. No. So no. 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 that's back to the expectations. And if the expectations aren't fulfilled, boom. Exactly. So that's what do you what think? Happen. That's what fit. would happen if you had a job. If you had yeah. employees at yeah. a job and you don't, and the person does not do their job, they give give them just a little bit of leeway and then they're gone. Yeah. So what do you I, think is a good length of time for a design team? Just across the board. Here. As a coordinator, here? uh the effort that it takes to get the applications, go through the applications, get all the shipping addresses, ship products, da, 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 get everybody in the bookkeeping system, whatever you're going to do. Oh, heck no, I won't do it for less than six months. It's a year. <laughs> and if I can extend that, I'm going to. But anybody yeah. else? As a design team member, I look at the ones that are six months to a year, and then I hope on the ones I like that I'll get the opportunity to re-up if I want to at the end. Because you don't know what's going to happen in six months. No. True. No. I've seen a lot of, it depends on the product, first mm -hmm. of yes. all. Um, you know, if it's a company that's releasing stamps every month, then starting at three months may not be that bad of an idea because you have to find out whether or not they're actually going to produce well with your style. Right. Um, I've seen where it starts at three to six months and then extends based on mutual you know, agreement. Um, the the one company that I'm with right now, uh, we start at six months. And then if you're happy, then we keep you as long as you're still producing yeah. quality, quality yeah. 
projects. Quality work. And mm-hmm. it would also probably depend on how big the team is. You know, I, I'm working with two big teams right now. Um, Crafters so if you Workshop, lose one usually, person, it's not that big a deal. Yeah, well, I mean, you yes, know, we I all know. feel it. But, um, you know, trying to find 12 people and 18 people, you know, is, is a whole lot harder than trying to find three. So, you know, if I had a smaller team, maybe I'd be more lenient to look at the three, six months. But so that would have a lot to do with it as well. That yeah. makes sense. Mm-hmm. Anybody else? I, know I, I like we... six months. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, we are uh again, our, our marketing team's two people. So we are very often flying by the seat of our pants. So I like, um, again, I, the system that I tried to outline a little bit kind of backfired. It's, it's a double-edged sword because, um, I usually, you know, I'll email someone a PDF, here's our launch. And then I'm like, you know, what do you want to do for the next three months basically? And then I pretty much go from there. And I mean, there are some, especially this last summer launch where I emailed and people were like, I, I don't have time. I'm like, okay, that's fine. I'll let you know when we launch again. Um, it's a lot more tedious to manage. So again, I've learned a lot of lessons the hard way because of that. Um, but I know that like I could definitely not do a year because I know with our two person marketing team, like we are like, yes, we are going to launch in June. And then it's like, july 2nd we're like dang it we missed it okay we're not you know what i mean and i know that like designers plan and i i feel like i know that i would let everyone down prematurely because when you plan in january and you're like this is where we're launching like it it just does not happen um especially with again if you got a smaller team you have fewer resources a lot of it is like okay like i mean our winter launch is gonna be next month and i have i don't know what we're launching uh, you know so it's kind of like i can't tell my designers like yes, I will have the product to you by September 4th at 3 p.m. And then I will have the expectation that you put, like, I can't lay those expectations because I I know that they're not going to be able to rely on me to do that either. Um, because again, we're, we're just kind of like lit- literally day by day, literally hour by hour. We're not, we're not as organized. So I don't want to create the illusion that we are that organized by saying, hello, you're going to be with us for 12 months and it's once a month and, it, you know, here's everything you're going to get because the second that I'm late on my commitment, then the designers can say, well, you didn't come through on your half. So why should I have to post this month? Because you sent everything to me three weeks late. So I'm not posting until I have time. So it's kind of one of those where um, I know that that style is not for every designer because there are people that want to plan a year in advance. And I can tell you, I would probably wouldn't work out very well because they're going to get frustrated. Um, but I mean, the designers that we do work with, like, it's literally like every couple months, I'm kind of like, here's what we got. You know, if you have time, that's great. And um, again, kind of what we've been talking about, it's like, if people are like, oh, you know, I'm not, I'm not really a fan of like back to school season or, oh, I don't really like Halloween. I'd rather wait for Christmas. So um, I don't get offended by any of that because it's kind of like, that's one less post that I have to look out for if I'm not, um, if, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. You know, I, I don't care. Um, it's then I, it just tells me I have to find someone else that does want to do it. Um, and it, again, it has been a little difficult when it's, um, you know, you run the risk of like, oh God, what if no one wants to launch? Then you're kind of like, okay, well, it's great. I guess we're not having a launch. Um, but the, the longer time periods worry me, especially for the people that are kind of just taking it day by day. It's not as a, I know that we are not organized enough to do that. And I don't know, um, you know, we have budgets and stuff that are set every single year, but it all so much of it depends on sales too, right? Like I could say my budget for a design team is X amount. And problem is that the launch before didn't do as great as we thought it was going to, or it was better than we thought it was going to be. So then it's like, oh, I can have, I can have more, I can have less. And that, that piece is so, um, is also very, very day to day, um, where it's kind of like, if someone does a video, we'll notice sales will spike that next day. So it's kind of, I don't think that we, again, our company specifically wouldn't be able to make that call on an annual basis. It, it's pretty, uh, I don't know, fluent, I think is the word I'm looking for. We can be friends, Michaela. Expectations of, again, like company versus yeah, design yeah. team member. So. Right, right. Well, I think I was talking to you, Aaron, the other day, and I was like, I, I haven't 
respond to your email, I have no excuse. I just, I'm so behind all my emails and that is the reason why I have not emailed you. It's because I have a lot of emails and I haven't gotten to yours and I'm sorry. Um, so it's, it's kind all good. of- But I also know that, you're gonna get back to me because we had that, rep, like you get to know the right. people That's too. So, yeah. I will yeah. get back to you. Right, right. Yeah. Hi, Lauren, thank you. <laughs> Hello, everybody who's gotten on lately. We, I, we've, I've been trying to put questions <laughs> up, and if you have questions, answer. So I also want to lead this into the next question, which is we've talked about how long a design team term should run, but how often should that same those same members continue working with that company? Is it good to change it up, get fresh people? Is it good to keep the same team over and over? Is it good to, I'm going to ask a whole bunch of questions, they're all kind of the same idea. Do you just say, hey, you're gonna stay and just look for people to stay and then if people decide to leave, then you fill in the gaps or do you relaunch and have a new call every time and start fresh and if you qualify, you qualify. I've had teams do all of them, so thoughts. I've had teams do all of them too. I like that last approach of uh, you know putting out a call, getting your initial team and then removing people as they don't fit or work out anymore and adding in fresh blood. I think that design team members are really representatives of the brand and you get to see a face, you get, you get to see a person. Um, and again, you develop a relationship with that brand through that person. Like uh, Berta is on here. Roberta is on here and she becomes a loyal customer of, of the people that her friends work for, you know, and I like, I've seen it, especially through her. Uh, but I know that other people do the same thing. Does that make sense? Yeah, no. This is just <laughs> opening a question of possibility. So what do you guys think? And also audience, what do you think is best too? I mean, you guys can pipe up and answer the question too. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, we I've do. Done both. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go oh. ahead. Oh. I say, I, I've experienced both where, you know, I get it where a brand wants to move in a different direction or they want to bring in different faces and, and, you know, you don't take it personally, go up, you know, it opens another door to something else. And then most of the teams I'm on now didn't even do design calls and I've been with them for several years and they're products that I would be using even if I didn't work for these companies. Like I just genuinely love these products. So, I, it's very flattering that they invite you to come back for another year. Um, and it makes you feel um, like a valuable part of the team. So to me, it's nice when, when your work is acknowledged and you're invited to come back again. But at the same time, if you're not invited back, try not to take it personally because yes. there's a lot of things happening behind the scenes that maybe you don't know about. And it's not something that you did bad. It was just that they wanna move in a different direction. So you just, you really have to be flexible. Just or maybe they're sizing the team down a little bit because they had too many or whatever, you know. Right, right. And, you know, markets change and the craft industry changes. So, you know, in this business, you just have to be very flexible. And that's where, you know, it's a different topic, but we talked about monetizing and doing different things. Like you have to have eggs in a lot of different baskets. Like if you think you can just do design teams and make an income off it, I mean, maybe you can. <laughs> I, you know, I haven't, but it, I enjoy it. But I've also got other things going on. Mm -hmm. I think like I've had to um, have talks with designers, you know, where they say, hey, I can do three posts a month. And and I've had to say, you know, we can't pay you three, three posts a month um, just for budget reasons. But I'm not going to ask you to reduce your price. I'm just going to tell you, like, I know that your post is worth X dollars. That's the price. tag. I'm not questioning it. I like your projects. I just can't it's got, then it's going to have to be every other month or it's going to have to be, you know, whatever it is. And I think that's really important, especially for people that um, are trying to be on design teams, like try not like, you know, don't undersell your own value. Um, because mm -hmm. again, like at the end of the day, like all of us at some point are working for someone that's trying to make money, you know what I mean? And, and sometimes that's, it's just simple math at that point and I don't want I never want people to think that um you know they're stuck with the flex or the yeah I just and when you find a company you know, as a designer that you love working with it's kind of like I want to stay there as long as possible because this is a great yeah. relationship you know yeah. but it's also right. nice to have new people so you you should know when it's time for you to leave as well yeah. if you're a designer mm -hmm. um yeah. 
And if it's not the right fit anymore or you're going a different path, then it's okay also to tell a company, I'm good. They're not going to take offense to that. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I've worked, uh, I'm working again with a few teams right now. So we have one that you know, we're pretty much working with them on a full, uh, with the gel press team. And then the crafters workshop in the past, we've always done a, a design team call every year. And, you know, we'll keep on, we usually try to keep one or two. And then we try to get fresh blood in there, basically, because, you know, I think Rachel touched on a little bit, you know, if you keep doing the same thing or wherever you get, it starts to look flat. So we kind of get in our own little routines. And if you have design team members who are just always posting the same thing, it doesn't give you like new ideas. And so by bringing in new design team members, you're able to revigorate the interest in the product because you're showing new ways to use it because this person over here might have some totally new concept, you know, bringing Morena in would be so awesome to show how to use stencils with furniture, you know, so we don't have anybody doing it right now. Don't press on skeletons. <laughs> but this year, it was an exception this year. We did. I'll, I'll be honest, straight up front. We didn't do a design team call this year. After everything that we all went through last year, we just decided we wanted to keep this team. They were doing such a fantastic job mm -hmm. and we've extended it. And I don't know where it's going to go next year yet. We haven't made those decisions, but you know, I also expect those design team members to let me know when they're ready to step down. If we don't, change that and mm -hmm. it's okay it's absolutely okay um you know we'll we'll do it again so sorry i have to put this out there because i know it was meant specifically for cassie uh. <laughs> i love yeah. it when you guys like whenever i have panelists or i have guests on the show and they're like a, a family member or a really good friend and they're like Boo! and i'm like yes you have your own <laughs> you have two <laughs> You have your own little pet squad. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Do anybody on the panel have a question they'd like to pose or to ask the rest of the panel? Or also, and then also viewers. We're going to kind of wrap it up here. We're almost, we're, we've been on for a long time. And I know our guests are probably, our, our panel is getting a little winded. But um, mm -hmm. I don't want to leave a question out if there is a good question. Um, I would love to touch on like guest designing. Uh, sure. So I feel that guest designing is almost an even higher compliment than being a permanent design team member mm -hmm. because they are typically people that are sought out and, oh, we liked your style and we, we value you. Would you please do something with us? Mm -hmm. That's my view on it. I didn't, great compliment. That yeah. was, I didn't realize that was what was going on on the other side. That's, that's in my <laughs> head. That's in my head. Well, I, mean, I mean, it makes sense, but I hadn't thought about that. I've been I'm surprised more brands don't do that. Because, I, yeah, I agree. It's a great compliment. I think it would be less stress as a designer, like not having to come up with 12 projects a year or whatever. You know, like I can do something mm -hmm. really special for you this one time because I'm really inspired. Right. Yeah. That's going to come back mostly from a company's perspective to budget. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. Yeah. Yep. I, I just think that I think that if you are, if someone asks you to guest design it, it is an awesome chance to put your best foot forward. It is a high compliment that someone saw your work and was like, I want them to work with our product. Um, and if you're offered a guest design, make it work, whether it's mm -hmm. I can't do it this month. Can we do it next month? Be honest, obviously, about your abilities to work with the time frame that they need, but it's a huge compliment in my book. I, bet I get asked a lot from various companies, hey, can we send you product? Um, I have to turn a lot down sometimes just because there's just, a, I only have so many days, you know? Okay. So yeah, you just have to work with. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just speaking from my point of view, but it's just, yeah, you have to work with what's good with, with you. And yeah, I've had, I've said yes to some, like the, I recently, scrapbook.com said, hey, we'd love to have you come, you know, guest with us and do some stuff with us. And sure, I'll do that. Yep, I'm game, you know, let's go. 
And um, first, and I love helping out small companies too, but it depends on what they're asking for. And if they're saying, hey, we want to have three posts from you in one month as a guest designer, I'm like, whoa, I'm sorry. <laughs> that, that's a sorry, lot. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, not going to happen. So be realistic also as a company asking for guest designing. Don't yes. overstep how much you're asking. Yeah. And go ahead and reach for awesome people. You never know who's going to say yes or when they're going to, you know, what it's don't be afraid or also reach out to companies in in a good way. Don't spam them. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, don't hesitate to reach out to companies. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like there was another question and I don't think we've touched on this one yet, which is where do you find design team calls? Oh. Facebook. Like where do you find Facebook. if a design team is putting out a call? So typically on the, the companies that I've worked with, there will be a blog post, Instagram post, Facebook post, and then they will share to their Facebook group, as well as there's a couple of different mm -hmm. design team call groups specifically. Yes. And I'm not saying design one is, team that calls is what it's called. It is, <laughs> yeah, they're literally called design yeah. team calls. And one called DT calls. Yeah, there's. Oh, I hadn't heard of that one. Yeah. yeah. Are they yeah, both ET? selective? I think one closed. Oh, DT. I'm not oh. saying ET, like ET home phone. Oh, yeah. you know? <laughs> Get right. I haven't looked in a while. It might might have closed. Yeah, yeah there's yeah. at least two that are open currently because I just posted. Okay. Yeah. I know that when but they we usually started, will post it on their website. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So if you're looking for a specific company, haunt their stuff and you'll start seeing they probably do it about once a year. And if they skip a year, it happens, you know, you never know. And but so just if you're interested in a company, just keep on kind of looking to see what they have. Keep browsing through. Even though my, my, my slate is totally full for the most part, I still go back and I look at DT calls or design scroll. team calls. And I just scroll through and see what's going on. But it's also a way for me to see what companies are still kind of in the mix, too. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, what's out there. And some smaller companies will put on their websites, work with us. Yeah. You know, ah, click on there and let them know you're interested in working with them. Yeah. So oh, yeah, so you started with... oh. Oops, she has sorry. a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This is naughty. This, this one? Yeah. Uh, no, well, no, that's one. I saw another one that said, how do you inspire your DT members? Oh, yeah. I was going to put that so, one up as well. Yeah. Well, do we want to do this one first and come back to that one? You're there. So, yes. I was <laughs> I'll take it down. That's okay. No. no. What does that mean? Social media takeover. So for instance, I've done this for a few companies. Um, I do it with this program that we're using right now. I am taking over some of your Facebooks right now. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so it's posting your material on their sites and you're speaking as you. It could be a live. It could be um, some companies love it. Some companies are like, nope, that's not what we'd like to do. So I think it all, from, from my perspective, from whenever I've done it with, it depends on the company. Mm -hmm. Has to be trust factor there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah don't let just anybody take over your site. I told all these ladies that I'm hosting, I'm like, I will not mess with your stuff. I have way too much stuff on my hands and I will be out as soon as we're done. So. You want to, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I you should get post your projects on my you. stuff. Yeah. 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 on your sites? No. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I know for me, it's a fun way to meet new people, you know, chat mm -hmm. with a different audience sometimes, uh, you know, it's just something different to try. <laughs> <laughs> I always like to meet people, so. <laughs> the nice yeah. thing about being on a DT is that you are getting personal exposure as well. Yes. So um, not necessarily even a, a, a takeover, but, you know, introduction of your team members is nice. Um, making sure that your team members see the they are valued uh, nice. by by giving them additional exposure or saying this person's birthday is today. like mm -hmm. it's all about being personal right well that leads into the next question was is how do you inspire a design team so if you're a coordinator or if you are a design team member what what are you looking for to help be inspired and go yes i really want to work for this company and i want to give them my best foot forward you know and i'm going to put my effort a thousand percent, not that you shouldn't anyway, but sometimes there's that little extra push that makes you love that company that just a little bit more potentially. I like so. that you turn that question around because I, I want to hear what other people say. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one. When, when I was on the, uh, 
Doris, but they had Crafts Unleashed was their website. Uh, we would have challenges maybe like twice a year. And I am very competitive, so challenges were really fun to me. So it would be like their top seller was um, plastic canvas, which I've never worked with. So we were all challenged to make something with plastic canvas. And then we had like a month to make it, and then it would get posted on their site, and the fans would vote for it. So it was really cool because you would get feedback from people. And then as design team members, we would get a bonus, like we could order more product or I, I can't remember what the, I didn't even care what the prize was. I just mm -hmm. wanted to win. But <laughs> <laughs> but I see it now. Yep, yep, because yep. it kept things different and interesting and it pushed me to try new things because it was like, oh, I know I am surrounded by super crafty people and I've got to outdo everybody. So like for me, that was fun. <laughs> And plus I would learn from them like, wow, she really kicked my butt, but that was a great technique and I'm going to try that next time. You know? I, that would stress me out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would totally do it, but I would be stressed the whole time. And then I'd be like yeah. watching and like emailing all my people like, you better vote for me. <laughs> <laughs> I like to, as a design team member, um, if I have a great idea with something, I like to share that idea if I know that I can't use it. So um, Amanda from Parallel Blossom Press, when iCrafter released this doily, I'm like, I don't even know how you would use that, right? Like, I don't, I don't get it. Doilies aren't my thing. She's like, I wanted to create a mobile, but I know I'm not going to have the time. I'm like, that's brilliant. Share that. Like, in my opinion, a design team um, often ends up being like a small community and mm -hmm. whether it is private chats or in the the facebook group or whatever it may be um you know becomes this this exchange of ideas and exchange of suggestions and encouragement mm -hmm. did somebody just look at the doily <laughs> <laughs> No, I love this one too. Like you're being shared by the company. You're being yeah. acknowledged. Yep. Your yep. work is showing up and it's not the same person always being shared. It's kind of like everybody. Now granted, yeah. if your stuff is not up to par, they're not going to share it. So make sure you're up to your game too. But um, yeah, just I think just being acknowledged. Mm -hmm. But I also think like, especially if you've got like private Facebook groups where it's within the company, asking their opinion on something, you know, make them feel like they're part of what's going on. They work with the product day in and day out. So asking their opinion like, oh, should we call it this or this? We have a new product going down the line. What do you guys think of that? Or, and again, you know, non-disclosures and all that kind of stuff to make sure they're not sharing anything they shouldn't be. Um, but, you know, just getting an opinion, then you feel like you're part of the bigger picture and not just this tiny little something off in the corner that just does their blog post once a month or whatever. It's a relationship. Something. Yes. When I was on the Imagine design team way back when, um, we got to actually, they would send us prototype product that were, they were still kind of testing and figuring out if they even wanted to make it and produce it. And we got to test it. And, um, you know, then they had like a whole list of questions to answer, like, how do you like it? Does it work the way we intend it to? What do you think? Give us, show some samples, stuff like that. And that to me was really fun because I'm all about like digging in and to uh, something new and figuring out what, what can it do? What doesn't it do well? How can I use it in a non-standard way? Um, so that was pretty, that was really cool. Not a lot of companies do that necessarily that at least that I've worked with, but that was really fun. Also, another thing that was fun and kept things fresh when you're on, on a design team for a while, sometimes if you can, um, cross promote with another company and, uh, you know, you get their product and they get yours and then you make stuff using both of your products, you know, the, both of the companies, uh, and make your blog post that month. That's a nice way to keep things fresh and just like having something yeah. new, different to do. So I'm setting up a few of those those collaborations for a few different companies right now. And in my opinion, like as a design team member, I get really excited when I get to yeah. find something that I'm comfortable with, but then I get to add in something that I'm really excited about or something that's new to me. Like it's super fun. Yeah. Well, we're always looking for collaborations too. So if anybody oh, yeah. wants to, you know, hit me up next time. Yeah, yeah. Together. Yeah. Um, I love I the, every team. time I do this show, there's like two people that are like, Yep. <laughs> I also work with a team that sends chocolate with every box. So, oh, you know, that's wow. always a nice. <laughs> <Any day. laughs> it would melt coming here. It would melt going you know, to Aaron too. 
Where are you at, Debbie? Because I think you said you're in Florida. Well, She's in I'm Florida, too. Florida, Florida. Yeah. I'm in Southeast Florida. Where? Port St. Lucie. Okay. I'm just north okay. of Orlando. I want to okay. go to Disney World. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I get chocolate, and I'm down here, but they pack it so well that it, it always works. So I haven't had melted chocolate yet. Lauren, I'm working on collabs for us, just so you know. <laughs> Oh. I love it. I, oh, wait, wait. I'm down with chocolate. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but it's those small little things. It's that extra little something that you send a box. It could be a handwritten note also in yeah. the box when you get it. Yeah. That is hands down. That is the one way I feel like it's so personable when I get a box from a company and there's a nice little handwritten note in it. I get not all companies can do that, but maybe it also was we had a phone call conversation first and I got to know that company and that person. Michaela and I do this all the time. You know, we're chatting up the phone or we're emailing back and forth and I feel like I really have gotten to know that company and therefore I know what they're looking for and they know what they're expecting from me. And yeah. so it's just that that's that personal relationship that you can have with the company in whatever capacity that is able to have. So. Amanda's husband sent me coffee that he roasted once, and that made me really excited. I mean, wow. Great mm. day to <laughs> it's easy. We're, we're, we're cool with like coffee and chocolate. That's what yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is the way to my heart. But I even had like a Starbucks gift card thrown in there, too. Yes. You know, those kinds of things. <laughs> and, and another one um, coffee is in my blood. <laughs> yeah. Like when I'm we go to the conferences. Coffee. It's like nine o'clock and I'm still drinking coffee. <laughs> but at some of the conferences, I know some companies like I've worked with them. They're like, we need to get together and have a dinner. I mean, I've done this yeah. with Cheryl and with Crafters Workshop and it's, it's made a huge difference. It's like, we're going to take you out. We're going to have a nice dinner. And I felt like I was definitely part of, and the conversations wow. were awesome too. So those are kinds of things that makes the designer feel very like loved within the team as well. Yeah. <laughs> Um, another thing that um, Nicole, our coordinator for iCrafter, did once, um, and I thought this was really cool, and I still haven't used it because I suck, um, but she actually created, I didn't have product when she sent it, um, so sometime in the next month I'm using it, Nicole, uh, but she, <laughs> she created a personalized alcohol ink um, sheet. Yeah, that's the one she made. So she did, she did, she asked for our favorite colors and she oh, created an alcohol ink and then she wanted for, for us to use it and it was a challenge. And then she had, um, I think that the winner got like an entire set of uh, a line of, of alcohol inks because she had bought double oh. and it was so generous. Um, plus, part of my problem is I don't really want to die cut it up. It's so pretty. It's pretty. <laughs> I literally look at it. Spoil it. Well, I look at it and smile. But what a neat way for to try to inspire people, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Challenges. It sounds like challenges uh, everyone likes. I uh, definitely competitive people at least <laughs> yeah. I think that's part of it too if you're on a design team you're kind of in the competition to want to like you put yourself in there to be in that realm so well you're also competing against yourself because if you're doing a design team you're always trying to improve your own skills yeah. that's just a chance to try something else and stretch a little bit more mm -hmm. even if you don't win like Marina but <laughs> <laughs> but even if you don't win or you don't expect to win, like Marino <laughs> I feel I'm, 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 I'm my own worst critic. I'm always trying to do oh, better, but I don't really yeah. expect to reach somebody else's level. And I'm shocked when things turn out as well as they do. It's like, oh my God, that's awesome. But yeah, I'm sorry mean, for the really weird faces. My dog, I don't know if you noticed, my camera started wobbling for a second. He literally <laughs> almost knocked my camera off. I and know. I'm like, what are you doing back there? And the dog is just looking at me like, hi. He's like, mom, I want your attention. You've been on the camera. And <laughs> that's what doing. You didn't get to see Nala, the golden retriever, who really wants to climb in my lap. Uh -huh. so you have the big dog. And just walk through. Yeah, that's just wow. a big giant dog that claws on top of you. I am down for a Disney World crafty meetup whenever I get to come. Yeah. Well, I <laughs> said um, yes, yes, yes. we could do that next April if anybody wants because the uh, NAMTA yeah. AFCI is in Orlando next April. That's what I heard. Yes, yes. it is. It's official. Amanda, Amanda, who's who's taking me? <laughs> 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 I 
I have full plans to go as long as I have people covering my children to watch because it feel very you know, like guilty just ditching them and going fend for yourself and the youngest is still nine. You know, that's not very fun. <laughs> so I just need child care help and I'm all good. I'm there. <laughs> that's why we're doing our Central Texas meetup, right? At some point. Exactly. <laughs> yes. We totally tried to meet up. She and I were both in Marina and I were both in South Padre at the same time and we did our best to try and find it a we're way like a to mile get and to a half apart. Yeah. I know. I mean like we can just walk down the beach halfway through each other, but it was like, Hey, we're at this restaurant. Oh crap, we're already over here. You know, it was just <laughs> You and probably walk past this. each other. <laughs> potentially, potentially, yeah. yeah. But we had all of our families and stuff with us, so it was kind of hard. But it was nice to know that you were in the spaces, like the yeah. same space. You were like in the same sphere of things. Yeah. <laughs> Next time, we'll make it work. <laughs> Next time. Well, and it was like a last minute thing. Like all of a sudden, she's like, you're here. I'm like, yes, I am. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We did not plan ahead of time, unfortunately. No. So before we wrap this up, is there any other further questions or any other comments you would like to make? I am going to ask you guys to do a little, you know, um, pitch for yourself at the very, very end. But before we wrap up our design team discussion, anything else? Don't all speak at once, seriously. Because <laughs> <laughs> I want to know where we're all located. Uh, yeah, somebody's like, asking. Austin. San Antonio, oh. Texas. <laughs> Around Orlando. I'm on the East Coast of Florida, Port St. Lucie. I'm in Washington. I'm Ooh, in DC or state? State. We get rain. <laughs> we have pretty green trees yeah. and mountains. You do? And, yeah. Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I'd also love to know where everybody's watching that's uh, watching us right now. You can pipe up and tell us. So far, the furthest I've seen was Australia. Didn't we have an Australian in the house yep. earlier on? Melbourne. Yep. Oh, Michaela, you're in Phoenix, right? And Cassie, yes. you're up north. I'm in Lansing, Michigan. Yep. Oh, I was wow. born in Lansing. <laughs> it's too cold up there. <laughs> I can't deal with cold. We get a lot of snow, and that's why I don't go home to see my mom very often. Aww. But, <laughs> no. oh, another Australia in the house. <laughs> yeah. I, know, I think we're hitting the right time for Australia because it's their yeah. mid morning or afternoon. So right. yeah. there we go. I don't think we have anybody from Europe because they're all asleep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't watch the replay. Don't watch the replay. It's a lot of will it be on? Well, I wanted to say thank you to our entire panel for being here, and thank you to all the guests. Branson, Missouri. So I had to just throw it out there. Another Canada. There we go. Um, for everybody who's joined us, I truly appreciate everybody being on and watching, and all of you lovely ladies for being part of the panel. So before we wrap things up, I would love to, again, everybody, please give yourself a little bit of pitch. Where can they find you? What can they? Where, where can they see you? All the links for everybody is down below. Mm -hmm. And if you're interested in any of my future panels, check on over onto my YouTube channel, Erin Reed Makes, because we're streaming on a lot of different platforms today. I did a lot of takeovers today. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you can fill out the form. I have it. We have a few new episodes, and I have it through the end of the year. So if there's one that's a good fit for you, please fill out the form. So we're going to start, and we're going to go from Marina all the way on up. So Marina, Michaela, Cassie, Rachel, Cheryl, and Debbie, and just pitch if you've got something with one of your companies, for instance, a design team call, because that's what our topic is about. Yeah, I got you, Rachel. <laughs> Put a shout out for that. But again, I would love people to be able to follow you and find out where they can find you. Great. Anyway, Marina. All right. So I'm at Marina's Corner, Morena, M-O-R-E-N-A, <laughs> Corner. I'm starting to think you don't like me. Oh my god! It starts with you. Are you awake now? Are you good? Okay. You are getting a solo way out. Oh, there you go. All Sorry. right. Uh, but yeah, all the social media, uh, the design teams I'm on, um, Fairfield World, if you, you know, I don't sew a lot, but I can show you lots of different ways to use their products to upcycle your furniture, repurpose things, um, onlinelabels.com, and um, Style Tech Craft, amazing vinyl products. And of course, Maker's Movement, which I am obsessed with their shaker sprinkles. Just, Love them. Just to look at them. They're so fun. 
<laughs> Which is funny because I happen to have like a bunch of oh, like, oh, like, oh, yeah. I'm not just like, like, on the corner of my desk. <laughs> We mentioned shaker sprinkles. I had to pull it out. Every one of these, I'm like, I have them. they're amazing. <laughs> That's the best part amazing. of the launch every time. <laughs> they're awesome. <laughs> now I'm all off my stool. Segue okay. to Michaela. <laughs> no, it is. <laughs> and yeah, I'll make so sure I don't at... cut you off. <laughs> there we go. Uh, we're at themakersmovement.com. Um, so I think I'd mentioned it that we don't really have a super structured design team so um we kind of go month to month or every three months um if you go to our website we do have like a, a collaborator section so you we always just take those forms um and people i think you just like drop your social media link and i the auditing process is me looking at your social media so it's not really that um official so um yeah we're always we're always looking for people um but again we're we're restricted by launch and budget and all that good stuff so um, if I do not reach out to you, don't be offended. It might just be other factors out of my control. <laughs> hey, you're always wondering how to get on Teams? There you go. Check out their website. You never know what they have posted on there about it. There you go. <laughs> All right, Kathy. Hey, um, so I am Cassie's Parlor. Um, uh, you can find me, Cassie Parlor, everywhere on all social media. And Parlor is P A R L O U R. Uh, I am live every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook. So you can come hang out with us. We make a project every week. We have a different focus each time. Um, design teams, well, not really. I'm not really on design teams per se at this point, but I do work with a couple of companies. So I work with Makers Movement, and I also work with graphics to create projects for them. So that's where I am at. Awesome. But you also run some design teams too, right? Yes. I'm design team coordinator for coordinator for Renia. Mm -hmm. we there you go. Also, we've got a new team um, moving on along. There you go. <laughs> All right, Rachel. All right. I'm uh, Rachel Wynn. You can find me on Facebook and um, Instagram at r period win creates. Um, and then I do have a blog as well. I am on the design team for iCrafter and we do have a call open so if you work with dyes especially if you work with interactive dyes uh, but if you work with dyes and you really think that that's that's your niche then please hop on over and um, go to our blog and you'll be able to, to find in there the design team call and Really, we just want your crafty resume, some some photos, and then we are going to check out that social media for sure. Um, but I also am fortunate enough to work for Pear Blossom Press. If you like interactive and you want to add some light elements, we make easy lights and halo lights. They're awesome. And mm -hmm. Sassy and Crafty, I, I, I uh, work for them on the site as well. They make awesome stamp, stamps and stencils. Yeah, I got to make sure I put the right button and not delete you again. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. By the way, I was <laughs> I, like, I hovered over. I'm like, crap, no, 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 no. You couldn't see me in the background. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, Cheryl. I am Cheryl Baglioli. You can find me everywhere at Cheryl Baglioli. Um, on Facebook, my business page is Cheryl Baglioli Designs, just to keep personal but separate. Um, but you can, I think I'm the only Cheryl Baglioli around, so you can pretty find me pretty easily. I, um, I'm teaching, I'm exhibiting, I'm creating, living the art life, as I say. Uh, one of my other little side jobs or main jobs lately has been I am the creative coordinator or the sorry creative director for gel press and uh, so we have videos and information all the time on how to use your gel press plates and then I'm also the um, coordinator and a design team coordinator and education coordinator for the crafters workshop and so we deal with stencils and some amazing mediums. If you haven't tried them yet, make sure you check them out. But you can find them at Gel Press and the Crafters Workshop, both of those two companies. Make sure you follow them as well. Yes. <laughs> Brenda, yeah, I remember I all my titles. <laughs> all the different things. And the only thing I'm thinking throughout this entire thing is how you said to pronounce your last name was you're like an old Italian dude going, Poglioli. <laughs> and you have to have the emphasis, Poglioli. Like you're like, like this. Out. It does. <laughs> yeah, it totally. And I just remember that. So as you said your last name, I'm like, 
<laughs> I'll never forget it now, I promise. <laughs> Okay, in the back, though. It's supposed to be boyoli, but it got yeah. Alabama Nas, so it's boyoli. <laughs> I'm from Alabama. <laughs> My okay, there's like Alabama. six degrees of separation of where everybody lives and from and stuff, you know? We yeah. both got rid of our accents, though, so that's good. <laughs> my mother's from Italy, my dad's from Alabama. Oh, see? You said Alabama. Alabama. You and said that's it what right. Happened. <laughs> yep. I'm obsessed for the warmer weather. <laughs> All right, Debbie, you're up. <laughs> okay, so I'm Debbie Jenkins with Debbie J's Crafting Corner. Um, I do mostly card videos, and I do a live stream on Tuesdays at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. One thing I've been doing lately with those is I'm inviting folks to come on and do a crafty live with me, so I never know what we're going to do. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> one thing I like to tell everybody is that if I can make it, you can too. Uh -huh. <laughs> Good word of advice. I love that. Yeah. I would feel very intimidated not knowing what I was doing before I went on live. <laughs> I had a little bit of prep on my end. <laughs> I'm pretty good with on the fly with like this kind of stuff, but like, see to actually create something. That's what I do is see my <laughs> Yeah, no. At least on Tuesdays. <laughs> Gotcha. And I'm Erin Reed from Erin Reed Makes, and this was the Crafters View. We talked all about design teams. All the links for everybody is down below. Make sure you go follow all of them. We've thoroughly enjoyed having every one of these ladies on the panel and for all of you thank watching. You. And thank you, thank you so much for all your wonderful comments. Please don't forget to head on over and like and subscribe to all these wonderful ladies to their social media and give this video a thumbs up and a heart. We'd be truly, truly oh. thankful. <laughs> so, again, thank you, everybody. I truly appreciate it. Thank Bye. you for being on. <laughs> and if you're watching, don't forget to share, especially if you can know somebody who is interested in design teams and learning more. So, lots of great advice that was given here tonight. And I hope everybody has a wonderful evening. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>